in the parking garage and we can walk in that over. But uh, everybody just confirmed that they were going to be here. So I'm just assuming that somebody had to help them up a little bit. Understandable. So Okay. Alrighty, so just bear with us a second. Web access being a little bit cranky. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, text Christopher in room. And for everybody here, WebEx is just having a problem with storage. And if we don't have storage, we can't record and keep the record if we need to do that. So we are just trying to free up a little bit of space. All right, Nolan, give it another try. Okay. I think we're pouring it that way. Yes, if not, I can go ahead and get our actual uh, recording device. I'd just rather not delay strike me any longer if we can. I apologize, everybody, if any technical glitches were going to happen today, it was going to be to me. <laughs> Try to push them in, so it'll be fine. We'll get we'll, we'll get to it. Yes, it's a metal box. Do you know? Are you familiar with it? Stay here, okay. because I know where it is and how to it up. And I've been spoken. I'm going to give you the capable hands of Nolan while I go get our old screen so we can start with this. <clears throat> hey, hey, Jeff. How are you doing? Let's go. How are you today, sir? Good. Good, good, good. good. Welcome. We're just having a few technical difficulties in recording. I hate when that happens. <laughs> and when we'll I'm to get the old school device, it should be that. Got it.
Okay, we can move up. Which feels official. It's official. There's also. It has been I have to go back up to get some to cry. Okay. Thank you. The worst things in life can happen. So, one goes in, one the other goes in the other. It's not set up how you would think it would be set up, but you're going to have to do this because it's a different software. So I'm actually going to set this up. Yep. Which side? As we get to these. Okay. Okay. Do me a favor and photograph one of the discs. Hey, how are you? Um, now, if you're a little bit better with technology, it wasn't out to get me, but there are some things that can happen. Okay. Just haven't done this in so long. I never expected to go home out again. Thank God we didn't throw them out. I don't think anyone else would want to go out. <laughs> it's like between Connie and I, we're yeah. very well aware that something can and won't go wrong with technology for one of us. Yeah. And you should be able to pick up the QC level. Yeah. Wow. So it goes into. Although it doesn't look like it's working. It's <laughs> not charge. I want to get to the Thank you for everybody for your patience as we look out that technical glitch. Since we have four out of five commissioners, I think we can start this whenever we're ready. Okay, so I, I guess it's me today, huh? Yes. <laughs> no, okay. What is the chance that Kevin's going to come? He's just going to be late. No problem. So bear with me. I'll see if we can get through this today. All right, so we've got a call to order um, the October 13th, uh, 2021 uh, Victorian Village uh, Commission meeting. Uh, the next business meeting will be Wednesday, October 27th, uh, 2021 at 12 noon, and that's uh, same location, uh, 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204 that we are in now. 
Uh, the next hearing date will be uh, Wednesday, November 10th, 2021 at 4 p.m. Same location, 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Well, swear in staff. Did you confirm to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do, and I'm Kimberly Bernard. She is the assistant director of probation officer. Perfect. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, introduction of commissioners present. Start with Mr. Hissel. Tim Skinner. Jake Thomas. Hello. Sean Conyers. So we do have a quorum. Is there anything that you want to talk through in terms of process, COVID, public forum, et cetera? I'll give a quick overview of the hearing format for everybody. I think most everybody's familiar with it. There are going to be off chance there's some who's watching or here that's not familiar with it. Uh, the city staff will present the application. Then the applicant or and or owners should be sworn in and have to present any additional material. Registered speakers will then be sworn in and provided three minutes to speak. And then commissioners will discuss the case and ask questions as needed. And just to note, it typically takes me anywhere from three to five business days to start getting the hearing feedback back out to our applicants. And anybody whose application is continued or conceptual today will have an additional week from today to submit for the November hearing. Uh, is there a motion uh, for approval uh, to enter um, on to record the staff approvals? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Um, is there a, of an approval of the minutes from September 8th or any discussion related to that? Motion to approve minutes. Is there, a, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. All right. So our first application is 617 Denison Avenue. This application is to reinstall a window which were being bricked in the original window measuring roughly 30 inches wide and 60 inches tall and it's for the little casing and trim around to match and it will be painted the white trim with snowflake commissioners at the business meeting wanted to confirm that the removed unit was being put back into the house uh, staff recommends approval of the application with any modifications or clarifications made by the commission. Basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116 from 11, the standards for alteration. Can you state your name? I'm Julie Bullock. Okay. Raise your hand. Do you agree to tell the truth and not by the truth? I do. Thank you. Do you have anything to add? Um, he does have the original window and he's reinstalling it. It's the wood window. Is there anything at all? It's pretty simple, right? <laughs> okay. Any discussion, guys? Or... Nope. Is there a motion? Motion to approve uh, application WV 2107018 as submitted. Is there a second? Second, sir. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to application number two, ZV 21 0 10 010 P. This is for 1135 Neal Avenue. This application is to construct a two and a half brick duplex and to construct a two and a half story three car garage. Remove existing trees and landscape the front and back yard to include various plantings and trees. At the rear yard, we'll have papers behind the house and the carriage house. Staff has included the minutes from September 8th regarding comments to the main house, massing, proposed carriage house, and the landscaping. 
At the business meeting, the commissioners requested that the existing trees are noted on the site plan and any suggested mitigation in the loss of trees is noted. Commissioners also requested the height on the second story guardrail of the house, the color and finish of the brick were required. With the change to brick, staff is proposing the question, are there any additional architectural details that are needed? Uh, does the sun porch work with the design or are there modifications required? Should the carriage house dorm rooms be modified? And does the overall height fit in the existing structure? Staff does find it too tall. Staff recommends uh, continuance of the application. If not all of the products or cut sheets have been submitted, if they have been submitted, then staff recommends approval with any modifications or clarifications made by the commission. Basis for staff recommendation is 3116.12, the standards for new construction, and the Victorian Village guidelines on new construction, including what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Right. So, would you guys be able to state your name? Would you sworn in? Bradley Blumenscheid, we're the work sector. Do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do, I do. Awesome. You guys have anything to add to them? And did you get those materials that I sent you? When did you send them? Last week. I did get some of them. I think I was waiting on confirmation on the windows because there was a debate about that. Yeah. I, I think you may have sent that after I did the staff report. Um, so I guess we'll come back to the materials. Okay. Based on the comments last time, the uh, Commission requested that it be made out of brick, so we essentially went back to the drawing board and revamped the entire interior to get it to fit within the building footprint that is allowed within the site, include it in brick. So we flipped the, the plans, moved bedrooms, bathrooms around, essentially revamped the the overall interior design. The exterior design is now out of brick, which will be Bowerston brick. Which I brought prints, but I don't think I can hand those out. Um, went through and uh, reworked some of the details on the porch to better fit style of structure that um, you see a lot in the neighborhood. Cut back a little bit on the brick trim to make it fit better and a little more simplistic design, but still elegant and fits within the context. So the brick sits on top of a water table. Detailing along the roof line is similar to what you've seen in the past. Second floor sun porch railing is three feet to match the first floor railing. Last time we had a baluster style railing on the first floor, which is typically shorter. So I increased the heights of the first floor railing to match the second floor. We need the second floor to at least be three feet. So it made sense to just make them match. Moving around to the back. So the Entire structure is all brick veneer. Rework the details on the covered rear entry to make it reflect more of the details that were on the front of the building. The commission had a comment on that last time. As far as uh, massing of the building, that was a concern last time. So when we shrunk in the building to fit with the five foot setbacks, the massing fits more in line with the neighborhood and the adjacent buildings. As you can see on the I forget what sheet that is with the streets and the elevations, I think it's at the back. So we're moving on to the carriage house real quickly. I was kind of give a brief overview of everything. Uh, we lowered the peak height, we lowered the fascia height. We had removed the dormers from the building previously. Some of the commissioners commented that that was a mistake. It made it a little too simple and just didn't really fit well within the, the context of the alley. 
So by moving the fascia down, we're able to reestablish some eyebrow style dormers to penetrate up into the roof and give it a little more interest and match some of the other details that you see on the floor. Yeah, with my fingers in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sheet B 2.4 shows the overall elevation of the alley in context with the other garages and carriage houses. And as you can see from the south going north, we're about average height between the existing carriage houses along that alleyway. And that's pretty much it. Now, as far as materials, um, We've selected a, a, a gray dimensional style roof. I like to go with the Marvin windows or with the pre approved sightline windows from Gentleman. Selected a Bowerston brick, which is kind of a nice kind of reddish brownish brick. Oh, there it is. With standard gray grout. Garage doors, pretty simple, matches the elevations, steel style. The dimensional shingles. So those shingles are not on the pre approved list, but they match really close to the ones that are. Front entry door matches what's shown in the drawings. This is just a cut sheet from the manufacturer as far as the way the door, the three quarter light, and the paving works. Rear door, half light. Only in the wood. The one material that we haven't selected yet is the stone water table, what that's going to look like. Like to use, we like to use a manufactured cementitious stone. This has a pretty broad selection of what's called design block, and a lot of different colors. I think uh, if we can get through this section of the design, to where you know, the board is okay with how the massing is and the heights and so forth. If we can come back and have actual samples of the materials and we can start to work on construction documents in the meantime, I think that would really help keep the project moving forward. We do have speakers. Okay. So I have first on here had Lisa Craig Morrison. I know she had a conflict and we think she could be here for this. Um, I did pass along her email. I believe we do have Andrew Gardner here though. Oh, I'm sorry. Right I keep I keep waiting on Kevin to go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Can you state your name, sir? Andy Gardner. Sir, do you tell um agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Right. Okay, sir. So you have three minutes, right? Yes. Oh, perfect. I'll right. start when he starts. Thank you. Well, I appreciate your time today. We're here to just talk about uh, well, I live at eleven twenty seven Neil Avenue, just south of the lot. Um, to just touch base on three different areas, the duplex. The carriage house and the landscaping. Uh, I was really glad to see that they put in brick as a predominant material. Um, I just think that would look so much nicer in the neighborhood. I really appreciate that. The other thing, though, I don't really understand is that sun porch. I mean, I've seen a few sun porches around Neil Avenue and some other areas, and it just seems to end up being a party space and a really nice towel rack. So I'm crazy about that design feature. Um, as far as the carriage house, it was mentioned that I think that they lowered the peak. Well, that was, if I'm not mistaken, three or four months ago that the peak was lower. The last three meetings we've talked about lowering the massing, and the massing was too big. Well, it's still the same width, length, and height that it has been the last three or four months. At the end of the day, it's still three stories tall, and I just think that's far too big for a carriage house. As far as the architectural detailing, I really, I think it's gone downhill from the previous um, drawings. I mean, I think it doesn't fit in at all. Um, it went from having dormers two meetings ago to 
note to our person now. I'm not really sure what the detailing on the roof brings to that particular project. I just don't think it's very attractive and doesn't fit in the neighborhood. As far as landscaping, I was hoping that on their drawings, they would have had the four old growth trees. Um, I didn't see those on there. I really feel that some or at least one of those could be saved. I understand the others and the construction, but I do think some of that could be saved. The other thing I wanted to bring up is the sidewalk that appears on the landscaping plan. There's a sidewalk on either side of the uh, structure, the duplex that is. What I guess I'm concerned about our home, it's about two feet from the property line. With that being said, I think that cement walk could lend itself to rain and water to come over towards our home. If it isn't the slope is not out on more. Um, we have a dry basement. I'd like to keep it that way. And then really just one last kind of general question. There's been fencing in the front of that property. And I was wondering if that's being kept or included in the landscaping at all, or if that's being taken out. I appreciate your time. Okay, I'll turn it over to you guys. If you'd like to comment on the election goals, let me know. Okay, so I guess we have, you know, three kind of components, which would be the home, the carriage, house, and the landscape, just kind of just breaking it down that way. Um, do we want to just go around and just comment across the board or it probably is beneficial? I'm thinking beneficial to kind of break it down per element, just kind of thinking about the, um, you know, the three components. That's fine. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So, um, maybe do we start with the easy 1 and work our way. Vertically back up to the home, uh, so I'm going to say. Not necessarily easier Skinner, but, um, the, 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 let's, let's start maybe at the landscape component. At first, if that's okay, that's fine. Um, just for sake of time, it, it seemed like that may be a little bit easier just to, to kind of digest. Um, does anyone want to kind of start as it relates to landscaping? Can I can start there? Um, I think there's um, previous meetings, and then we hear again today some some commentary about what what is happening along the uh, you know, south side yard. Of the property, and so I think we, we still need uh, some more information there to understand the relationship of the existing trees there and what is intended along that that, that property line. Um, it, do you want to talk about the the sidewalks that have been added on either side in terms of their intent? The sidewalks along the sides of the house. Yes. That's so you can access both the front and back without having to go through your house. Um, I think it's a a good comment by. Uh, Sorry, for Mr. Gardner, I think his name was. Uh, so we do have uh, pavers in the back as a patio, and we could extend those pavers along the side to help with that drainage, so it isn't a completely solid surface. Well, and, but um, to note, um, th the house is going to have drain tiles as well. So any water that drains over to his is going to ultimately hit our drain tiles that will go to our sump pump and pop out. So any water between the houses will ultimately get pumped out to the street or the alleyway. So I think he was worried about a dry basement. Well, new new construction, I will have interior and exterior drain tiles to alleviate, to alleviate that issue. I think maybe the concern is from specifically the sidewalk surface towards the, the property line, just that, that specific runoff. Right, I understand that, but any any water is gonna get, you know, underneath or, you know, on that property line, but that water actually will go down on both sides and hit, we're, we're gonna, it's gonna be more of a, a gravel about four to five feet and then, and then um, soil. So any water, on that table line below is going to ultimately go to go to those drain tiles and then be, and then get pumped out uh, by the sump pump. Yeah, I get the water piece. I think the more uh, crucial piece is seeing uh, concrete for that stretch. The length, like that's a lot of mm -hmm. concrete. 
that's probably a whole driveway. Um, so I think it definitely has to be broken up with pavers or something. And, and the way it's indicating the current in the plan, it doesn't really get you from kind of getting from front door to back door, or front of property, back of property, but, but it's not currently connected as, as shown. Right, but it, it's if between the houses, you're, you, it's going to be so much elevated that you're not going to be able to even see that concrete, um, especially the, the the bushes or some of that landscape is going to be covering it. So if the, just understandable, uh, so we can move forward with, with this, you know, with that. I think that the, the, the comments are the length of the concrete, potentially looking at an alternate material. Uh, understanding that currently it doesn't connect the front to the back as possibly intended. So um, those are basically the comments. I just want to make sure. Right. That yeah. That's, and that's, that's something we, we can break it up where it's like, you know, from, yeah. from the front of the house to a certain point, like 10 to 16 feet. Okay. Hey, let's, let's, let's do a, a natural stone or something, a paver. Yeah. So you'll see it and then it's broken up and then concrete towards the back. But I, yeah, we, we can do, do something like that. Okay. Um, and, and the only reason I'm just trying to be safe on time, just to make sure that we get through the breath too as well. So that's, that's uh, I'm not necessarily uh, no, I get trying it. to I get rush it. I, I just know it's just small potatoes versus. I no, 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 it's, this is important. Well, not it's small important. potatoes, because if I was a neighbor and I had to look at that sidewalk, <laughs> I'd be pretty ticked. It's important. It's important. Well, I'm just talking about so time. Yeah. That's I'm not about time. I'm not talking about just. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. yes, sir. Okay. I guess the, the whole point of this is to consider the aesthetic in sidewalk. Sounds good. Yeah. So we also had uh, a note about trees. So as far as the trees being shown, there was four trees, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and I think maybe the the suggestion was that the at least one of those trees might be in a in a spot where I, I think we just need to understand where it is relative to right. The and trees. we we've had a we we had two talks with the north neighbor one, um, and we someone came to an agreement that three out of four is probably done. The one tree in back, um, where me and Bradley were talking about earlier, was once we have the plans where I can have my survey surveyor go out there and stick and stick it and say where my corners are at, we can accurately point how far that is because I can go out there and get measurements of my own, but we want to definitively definitively say this is how far it is, and talk to our arborist. They might get their own arborist, and so we have to be on the same page. We're already having those conversations, but we have to get the approval and say, hey, this is it. where it's going to be, and then we can actually take those takeoffs and, on surveys, get our corners, yes, and say, hey, this is what it is. Perfect. So we, we're, we're already on that. It's just we, we really want to get some fruit so we can get that, that portion decided. Perfect. Understood. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else on the landscape, guys, that we want? Want to touch on Sebo? Is there anything? Please. Just for clarification, uh, the, those sidewalks are on both sides of the home. Yes, correct. Yes. Is there a reason for it being on both sides? Two different tenants. Okay. All right. So maybe move on to the carriage house. Anybody want to start in terms of some of the changes to the carriage house and maybe any concerns or, or reservations regarding the current uh, massing. So I think, again, it's still too tall and I wish uh, the other piece just again, aesthetics, um, some kind of carriage door application. So Instead of just a uh, regular. Yeah, I'm sorry, go door. I want to make sure that we're not. So if he was to ask you a question, that's understandable, but we want to make sure that we're just not going back and forth so much just to try to save time. That's sure. understandable though. Yeah. Awesome. Tim or Thomas, is there do you have any thoughts or Yeah. No, thank you. Okay. Um, just for me, uh, as far as the carriage house, I, I would agree in terms of its its height. Um, I think the amount of roof is it, kind of exaggerated with 
you know, the, the dormer application or the current dormer application still. I think that that was kind of maybe some of the concerns last time. I think that it, it kind of reemphasizes um, the, the height, the verticality, you know, just based upon the, the way the mass is currently. And you have the one window, you have, and it's centered over the door. So it almost, it almost begins to exaggerate something that you want to kind of bring down and scale. Um, so just, just a thought there. Um, this dormer application, it, it's really hard to find uh, this aesthetic in the neighborhood in terms of a carriage house. Uh, so I think that that challenges me a little bit too as well. Uh, I would agree with um, with uh, Mr. Hism's observations in terms of the carriage style doors and things like that. It just really kind of play this, you know, the the, the charm of, of the carriage house up. Um, I think there's some very, very romantic uh, kind of carriage houses in that stretch that, you know, that you can get some some great examples that that references those things. Um, the height I, I think is is still too tall as it relates to it. Uh, I think it's more so looking not necessarily looking at the property to the south and then creating the average. I think it's more so trying to fit in from things from your property, so to speak, to the north. Uh, from just echoing comments that were offered last uh, last month. Anything else, guys? No. And I agree with both your comments. I just figured I'd no, state if I disagree. No, that's perfect. I just wanted to be short. I just wanted to be short. Okay, uh, does anybody want to move on now to uh, just the home itself? Move on to the home. Is there any discussion related to the home? One question I have is the, the porch. Can you clarify the material of the, the front porch, the lower level entry? The Base material or the material over the floor, excuse me, the floor material coverage. Has a uh, has uh, wood been explored as an option? What's that? Has wood been explored as an option for the, for the flooring? Yes. Yeah. Any other comments or dialogue regarding that? No, I'm glad to see it in brick. I think the detailing kind of the doors and the transoms are good. So I'll just kind of chime in just to kind of get some conversation going too as well. <clears throat> so I, I would agree. I, I, would, you know, I think that uh, Changing or transitioning uh, to the brick uh, as an option, um, I think that's 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 positive. Uh, from that getting the program within the variance. completely. I, I mean, it's just all these easy. steps have gotten. I mean, they, I know the time uh, related to it, but uh, there's been a lot of steps, and we appreciate it from that perspective. So, uh, just want to make sure that we start with that uh, massing wise and such. Um, um, you know, that's very helpful. So now it's transitioned to. It's transitioned to brick now. So, so all the other things, so to speak, have to catch up, right? So when you, when you think about the porch, I think Tim's notion about what is the material of the porch, materiality, what is the skirting, what is the surface of, you know, is it is it concrete or should it be now wood? Should it be, you know, have a wood skirt? Should it have a, a wood porch? You know, things of that nature that would tie it back to some of the other homes that are, um, you know, in the neighborhood along that stretch. Uh, now that the material, the main structure is brick from that perspective. So I think that's what he was referring to. Um, I would be interested in trying to understand programmatically, uh, but not necessarily changing the program, but being able to get rid of access to um, the second floor structure or, or exterior porches to the front. Still maintain that, 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 that thought about you know, it's being uh, representative of the previous, uh, you know, you know um, um, house that was on the block that you guys had referenced in that image, but still with the railing and the ideal of a sun porch, but without access. Uh, I don't necessarily think that it changes anything. Uh, there's a lot of homes that are actually on O'Neill that don't have access, that don't have windows, but it's just part of the overall massing to balance out the massing. So um, just something to think about and consider. Um, as far as um, 
the materials in the rear, looking at the, the rear porch and understanding the rear porch as it relates to the front porch. Appreciate of, of that. I think it starts to kind of give you that indication that it is probably a wood kind of structure at the at the at the rear, possibly uh, with maybe concrete step. Um, and then the idea that there's some maybe metal handrail that's attached. Um, you know, prefab, things of that nature, trying to get away from a deck. Um, I, I think that we just want to be, um, I think materials are going to be very important in terms of the conversation because I think we want to get away from um, maybe suburban materials that in theory are supposed to represent some of these aesthetics that are traditional aesthetics. Um, so when you say prefab, you know, that, that's something I think that we really want to kind of understand what that product is and what that looks like. So I think an emphasis of materiality and being able to get samples and understand those when we talk about brick. Um, what the water table is so important, understanding the stone, because there have been examples in the neighborhood that it just didn't come out right. So, you know, um, so it'd be really great to have some physical samples uh, in the future. I think that's. Okay. Hey, Greg. Is there any any other comments that we want to offer? And I okay. Yeah, I second it. Kind of just down to kind of detail and final final touches with with some materials to school. Awesome. So, uh, with those comments offered today amongst the commission, and I I should. Go back to Kimberly and say, Kimberly, do you want to, you know, talk about the material and the shingle, um, you know, aspect related to that at all? I didn't give you an opportunity. It's, it's okay. I can answer and address that if, if needed. Or okay. this is all going to be continued. I just wrap it into the staff report for next time. Okay. Okay. Um, I kick it back over to you guys and say, given the comments that were offered and such, is um, how do you guys want to move this forward? We to get to this point, we've seeded quite a bit, and I appreciate everyone saying certain details need to be worked out and so forth. Passing down the, the window proportions, got that figured out, the height of the building, the massing. If it comes down to material, could we get an approval and then come back with materials? That Fit within the design presented. Understandable. Um, it's, it seems as though, I mean, obviously, there's always, uh, I shouldn't say conceded. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't like that. I don't like that term either. I didn't like that term. So, because um, I don't think that it's a concession. Right? I think that there's been positive dialogue. I think that there's been positive responsiveness uh, across the board. And I think that it's, it's yielding something which I think the neighborhood would be, you know, pleased with. And I think we're trending towards that. So, um, you know, we, we had referenced uh, a lot of other projects and a lot of other projects, regardless of scale, is they sometimes take a little bit more. And this is one of those projects. And so it's the important kind of missing tooth on the block and a little bit more time, maybe just the right solution. Now, it seems as though you, you gain some sense of consensus today about where you're trending. So if there's a concern in terms of you know, architectural services or moving forward, things of that nature. I don't think that you, I don't think that you heard that you're not moving forward in the right direction. So, of course, there's a little risk on your part, but that's not, I mean, we don't balance risk from that standpoint. That's not what we do. Um, so, um, so it seems like we're giving you the information that's needed, but we don't give conceptual approvals on portions to be able to come back with materials and things like that later on. So I, I, don't, I preface all of that to say that that's not what we do. So, so one thing, yes, when, you, when you're talking about materials and the, the tooth in the neighborhood, right? Yes, sir. We talked about a duplex. The duplex that's two blocks down, right? That that has a, you know, concrete steps walking up. Pretty sure they they didn't have to. You know, once you get to this portion, it's like, hey, have you have you thought of wood? You know, like we we we're 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 going toward really a 
appeasing, you know, either the neighbor to the south or the north or across the street, right? We're, we we are we are trying to put forward like, hey, this is what we're getting, especially the carriage house and back. The carriage house and back where Commissioner uh, Sullivan's like, hey, bring bring the the gables back. You know, if you're going to go at that that scale of height, bring them back. And I, I feel that, or we feel that. When when we do bring them back, you're like, you know what? That, that's that's not going to work. So 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 what is it? You're, so now you're so now you're saying, if you go to the to the north, we're good, right? So that's two feet. So so to submit next next month, if we're at twenty eight feet, we should have no discussion on height anymore. Because that's 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 what we're getting. That's that's the feedback that we're getting on the carriage house. You're saying, hey, if you go to, and don't don't look to the south, look to the north. So now we're moving forward, like okay, lower two feet. You know, we'll we'll do a, a, a we'll, we'll we'll do a different gable for that height. But now when we do that, it's like oh no, you know what? You got that perfect. We're gonna you need to change the door. You know, I I feel like there's 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 more nitpicking. Because one person spoke up, or you get an email, you know how how do how do, how do, you, how do we bridge that gap when we're trying to submit something that it gets scrutinized, and then we're just going to continue this? So I think your architect should be very clear on criticism and constructive criticism and how a design gets built up. Are you familiar with this? Of course, of course you are. So as we see this, I never saw any detail of any type of carriage door. I saw a regular suburban door. So, of course, I'm going to say that I can't I cannot. Critique something I don't know or don't see. And so, therefore, when I see it, I will critique it and say something. This isn't like a rolled wheel and what I'm going to pick on something. We're trying to bring this so each neighbor is uh, happy with it and you're happy with it. And ultimately, your project will be successful, which which I understand, sir. You but know, at this the same is time, that door. That door that we pick is 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 the same doors that are on some of the alleys garages. On the alley garages or the carriage houses. Well, the, the garage is on the alleyway. So okay, so there's a big difference between wearing a suit and a shirt and a pair of pants. So I so I don't know on some on some, on some, on some of the the, gar the carriage houses too. I'm just saying the 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 program. So we always talk about the program, right? Program is this and this and this. So, where our Bradley is talking about, it's like, hey, we we're we're submitting the stuff that that you are saying that we we need to do, right? And then on, on the materiality, it's like, okay, we can fix that, you know, on a, on the next month. But now it's like we we fix some stuff and like, you know what? That's not going to fit. It's like we 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 are like you said, we're we're conceding. To to do this, and you're like, I don't like that word, but I'm saying we are, we are, we are, we we, we could go to arbitration or whatever, but we are conceding. We we are trying to do our best to to get this done. But when the neighbor to the north or the south or across the street is 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 pushing this agenda, that yes, we we are working. We working with the neighbor to the north. We're addressing those trees. You know, some of the stuff that we can work as. You know, with staff or with you, but I, I don't know. I'm just going back to the materiality where the, there's a duplex that was built, you know, a year and a half ago that has concrete steps, you know, that has concrete back, that doesn't have uh, a, a a porch in back. I'm like, so what? So we're this we're we're, we're different. All right, because so no one, because no one, no one. So, so I'm, I'm going to interrupt you just because we can't allow everyone to testify like you are at this point in time. In, in fairness to everyone else, also, you've used lots of examples, um, but have not been specific. And so, um, it's not fair for for you or anyone else to come in and say, you know, the house down the block has this, or the, the other garages in the alley have that, unless you're providing us with specific examples. Um, we can't speak or opine to the examples that you're generally throwing out there. The other thing is the commission has changed over the years. And so there are some things that were approved at a certain time where there weren't actually guidelines and things of that nature. And so 
once again, it's not fair to say the house down the block has this, and so I want it as well, because we don't know what that was approved under. We don't know if it actually was even approved by the commission. It could be a house that needs to be reported for a violation. And so um, I agree with the other commissioners is that it's also not fair to say that you're conceding and things of that nature, because frankly, I think the commissioners have been quite fair in the amount of time that's gone by here thinking the focus is the houses immediately here. So when you say two blocks down the street, we're looking at the houses immediately here. Also, if you look at the houses immediately here to your north and south of this property, there's some of the largest and most beautiful homes on all of Neal Avenue, and they are uh, all brick. And so if we go down that, that route, frankly, going back to the guidelines, this arguably should not be a duplex. This arguably should be a brick uh, property. And so um, if we want to go back to the legal aspect, and now I put my lawyer hat on, um, I think we've been more than fair, and, and it's not necessarily fair the terms that you're using and the position you're taking. I definitely understand your frustration because we all are frustrated as well, too. I mean, we've been going at this, and we voluntarily spend our time going through this as well, and it's not just the hearing time. So I say all this that hopefully we all can take a deep breath, calm down, and consider all of those things as we're trying to work through this. Also, every iteration that you brought here, each time one thing changes, it changes a lot of other things. And so that's why you may hear someone say, well, we were okay with the hype when you were doing this, but then you changed from siding to brick. So a lot of these changes that tweak, they tweak other things. I'm sure your architect is very familiar with that. And so um, I say all of this just for you to take these other things into consideration when you make generalizations to the commission about other properties that are around and things of that nature. At the end of the day, our goal is to move this on as fast as we can, but efficient, considering the other properties in the neighborhood and in fairness. Because the moment we allow you to do something here, 10 other people are going to line up and say, well, there's the house that has it, I want it as well. So we have an obligation to stay focused on the guidelines as well as the ordinances. And then ultimately, if those things are met, and the commission is able to approve that, then we happily will do that. But we're not here to simply rubber stamp or say that you're conceding to anything. And the last point I make is that, um, you know, you can't make threats that you'll go to arbitration and things of that nature. You obviously have whatever rights that you want and you can exercise those, but we ultimately, it's not fair for you to also come in here and make those types of statements. It's, it's, it's absurd, it's, it's not a threat. I'm just saying I, that th those are the, those are the, that is laid out. She sent she sent it over last week or a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, you can go through this. I'm just saying that, that, that was that's not a threat. Understand. That, that was, that was, that was thank you, Mr. Thibault. Thank you. Thank you for settling us back down from that perspective and kind of allowing us to regroup. So with that being the case, you've heard the commission's comments. Um obviously there's been a lot of great progress uh, from that perspective. Just you know, staying positive from that perspective. So um I think you've heard that uh, today. So uh, with that being the case. Um, what, what would you guys, what would you guys want us to do? Can we, can we table it for next month? Yes. So, um, <clears throat> so with next month, I just want to be, you know, is there any questions about the information that you need next month where you guys have physical materials, things of that, you know, that were in, inadvertently missed, you know, from our, from the presentation, would you be able to have, you know, understanding of what that materiality at the at the skirt, the manufactured stone, maybe some brick samples, things, you know. So hope, there are a lot of homes that have been built in projects that physical materials before the COVID conditions hit that we saw physical materials, and that was kind of a prerequisite from that perspective. Yeah, so, so we'll, if we'll we have that. if we have them, I think it would help the conversation. So. Okay. Um, is it a possibility of being able to have just and I, that makes sense? I'm going to work with the applicant because you guys are touching it and I think it will help. I'm also going to request that we, we can make sure we have a forum. Okay. And a business meeting where everybody's schedules are kind of crazy. Okay. And Commissioner C lives in Skinner right there. But I think that'll help as well to get some extra comments from a couple months from at least another perspective. Okay, perfect. And the PDFs, I think, are, 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 are kind of valid for, you know, the main, but I think being able to see the physical in person, maybe if it's the hearing or something of that nature, 
uh, just for, just to take considerations of the you know staying safe, understandable. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that those would help the conversation. Sure. Okay. Um, anything else, guys? Kind of a motion to continue. I'm sorry. Ingrid is here to speak, but she's very adamant about having the sun porch. So I do think that we are going to try to keep that as we work through these details, because that's a feature of the historic house. And even if you make it where it's a bow sun porch, people are still going to climb out there and use it. So I'd rather it be safe and be appropriately designed to handle that. Just be as it's supposed to be. Understandable. Yeah. We, you are the comments that make sense. So understandable. And a motion to continue. So, is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you, guys. Appreciate aye. it. Aye. Thank you so much. All right, we are skipping number three as that application has been withdrawn, and we are moving on to application number four, which is BB 11 10 0 10. This is 755 Denison Avenue and 217 Bottles Avenue. This application is to replace the existing interior perimeter of window and chain curves with five foot brown iron fence using the same design as the Terrence railing, which has been previously approved. Realigned with the existing gate to center on the pool instead of the fireplace. Brought iron fence will include a foot gate into the pool area as well as replacing the wooden foot gate at 217 bubbles. Both foot gates would match in style now. In addition, they will be replacing the wrought iron railing that was damaged into the cellar with a single wrought iron railing to match the existing off the back porch and remove the current wooden privacy fence between 755 Denison and 217 Buttles and replace with a 30 inch matching fence with a gate that matches the perimeter fence and install a short exterior perimeter garden fence between 18 to 24 inches high that matches the interior fence. Commissioners at the business meeting requested an updated site plan that more easily displayed where the fences of different heights were. Color coding was suggested as a possibility to help with clarification. Commissioners wanted to know that the proposed perimeter fence treatment to the area around it. They were curious if the area would be grass, mulch, etc. The applicant has provided a color coded uh, site plan showing where all of the fences would be located. Uh, staff recommends approval of the application with any modifications or clarifications made by the commission. And the basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.13, the standard for site improvement, and the Victorian Village Guidelines on fences and yards. Is there an applicant by any chance? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead and state your name and get your sworn in. Jason Henry. Do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. Do you have anything uh, to add or kind of walk us through? Uh, just that there's one error on the um, application. I put that uh, the exterior perimeter fence is 18 to 24. I'm not sure that's just my mistake. As you may have noticed on the color coding, it's uh, 36. When we walk the, when we walk the perimeter, an 18 to 24 inch fence is just a little kind of crazy. <laughs> so so we, that's the only slight adjustment. So yeah, the, the intent is, is really to just kind of link the properties and then get rid of some of the you know old fence chain link and make it more consistent. Thank you. Any questions, guys, or um, discussion related to this property? No, I'm fine. I just had one question, which was um, in the color coded, it said 36 inch fence for the front, which is the green. Yeah. And then I couldn't find a section of the 36. Right. So I just didn't know if it's going to represent the 30 or if that's going to like. You mean what it would look like? Yes. Uh, it's the same. It'd be the same. Same. Same okay. style of everything. So it was just a clarification. So when we say that, it just references. It's a shorter version. Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anything else? 
this. The only thing with the, the 30 inch is, is that fit part of the pool closure? Um, I mean, it's the perimeter of, it's the, um, I guess, yes, because it's the perimeter of the, the property, right? Um, Maybe just double check that in terms of code required code okay. um, that it might require 36. Okay. So I just want to confirm that 30 inch fence, that's all behind uh, kind of a connected piece of architecture, or is there anything separating it? From what I can remember, there's the double carriage house or the double garages and then the carriage house. So if you could go to um, the picture of the wooden fence. Might be easier. This thing is right there, right now. Um, the one previous. Yeah, so it, you can see it's kind of raised. So it'd be 30 inches of, uh, you know, it started at the top of that rock wall, and it would be 30 inches. But to your point, that's great if you're going this way, but if you're going that way and, and a lot of times the code interpretation is, is also getting in right so getting in it might might work because you've got 30 inches plus the rock wall but i can i can check that code and my, my other comment commentary is just to be considerate and mindful of uh, this is a business meeting but just the the perimeter fence just in terms of what's happening immediately adjacent to that it's probably made to be sidewalk but just thinking from a maintenance standpoint mm -hmm. and that the long-term aesthetic of you know what happens immediately just to advance it yeah it's it tough be, to maintain with with just lawns right. right the likelihood is that it would be about maybe nine inches in from the sidewalk and have nine inches of mulch on either side so like an 18 inch mulch bed um, if that's what you mean directly underneath so we're, yes there's not weeds and grass growing up yet so my anticipation is mulch on either side. Okay. Is there a, a motion? Let's go through. Number. So it is BB 21 10 010. Yes, let's go through BB 21 10 010. As recommended, I approve my staff. Is there a second? Second. Any additional uh, discussion? Just do you want to kind of clarify that we're we're looking at just not the application. We're looking at the clarifications of the heights that were determined on the color coded plan, just to make sure that we're okay. okay. All right. Ready for a vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank Welcome. you, sir, for your clarification. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Somehow I've lost these files from this, so I'm going to get them back on. You're not here. You're only supposed to load this stuff. Thank you. Very well. All right. Our next application is number five, which is the B-21-10-0. This is for 1130 South Kent Highland Avenue. Um, this it has been issued a code violation that the application is to remove grass, add new plant materials, including low-growing flowering plants and low-growing shrubs. Small fruit trees are to be planted and trained into an escalator shape, and I'm sure just better we could probably pronounce that better than I am because I think I butchered that. Um, there are going to be five wooden posts of treated cedar, which will stand four feet high with wire supports to support the fruit trees and add limestone papers. Commissioners at the business meeting wanted to know what design the trees would be trained in. They noted that most of the discussion at the hearing would likely be around the appropriateness of that tree installation. Uh, HBO staff does not support the Esperal trees as the highest fence and breathing pressures are typically brought iron, which does not obscure the view of the house. Staff finds the slope and minimal landscaping of the front yards along Highland Avenue to be a, a distinguishing characteristic of the property. 
Staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the four foot high treatment cedar be removed and that no screening trees are planted in the front yard. Basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116.11. These standards for alteration, specifically 1, 2, and 5. And then City Code 3116.13, these standards for site improvement, specifically A and B, and the Victorian Village guidelines on fences yards, seeing what is appropriate and what is not appropriate, and including um, something that's not appropriate that is flowering plants that drop fruit on public. Thank you, Sworn Did you state your name? Uh, yes, Sarah Hayford. Sarah, do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. Do you have anything to add to try to help us uh, kind of work through this a little bit? Yeah, um, I guess I just wanted to be clear on the, um, the smaller trees, which I think that's how you pronounce it, but I'm actually not sure either. Um, the idea of these trees is that uh, it's a design to grow trees in a small space, so they're very horizontal trees. So the goal is that they won't reach at all into the public walkway. They won't drop fruit in the public walkway. It keeps them very small and easy to um, Discussion. I, uh, so I've never seen um, spalliers used in this manner. As a fence, they're always usually against a structure because the structure supports and, and it's a backdrop for it. So I find this just a little odd. I would I would agree from that perspective. I mean, you do see it kind of against a, a backdrop. Um, I think the one condition too is just trying to understand and maintain that sense of transparency. Um, you know, the streetscape, being able to see through it, and um, it's a beautiful home. So being able to, um, you know, kind of maintain that visual connection. Um, I think is important. Yeah, and I, I I agree. I think it's a you know it's a creative idea. I, I agree that in terms of the application of being able to maintain that top of supportive structure behind, and I, I think ultimately it's just this location is it's not appropriate for that type of location. Yeah, I guess. Um... I would love to plant trees against a structure. That's where they have the sun in my yard. So that's um, where I can take advantage of sort of having my yard be used in a way that's aesthetically attractive and also productive. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, the height, they're designed to be short, the four foot, they don't want, you know, they don't want to be um, they're sort of below the same line for people. Any other comments first? So, um, so interesting. So, so the code violation is for landscaping. Yes. Okay. So landscaping in general. Yes. Um, so today we need to, we need to, we need to give her some sense of approval on the landscape modifications and then what any amendments of things that are not appropriate as part of the motion. Is that, and that, is that correct? Or you could do that, or I mean, break us apart. And read to remove the trees that is normally that you modify the application and amend it. Okay. Um, if they were adamant about keeping the trees and that's something that the commission did not find appropriate, you could break that part out and vote on it separately. Okay. So then I will turn it back over. So, um, <clears throat> thank you, Kimberly. So you heard commentary from the commission. So I guess with that, we have two. We have two choices. We have one that we could break it apart. Um, which we, we would break the landscaping component out and we would say you would gain a vote on the tree aspect. Um, that would be one approach. Second approach would be just uh, keep it all together um, with the understanding that you amended and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to proceed with doing the trees. Not a problem at all, understandable, but I just need to move forward uh, with an approval of the landscape component minus the tree application. And it would include removing the post. Yes, and removing the post, etc. That will be supportive. Um, um, so I guess the I mean, I feel strongly about the trees, um, and I, um, I you know I don't think they'd block the view of the house, and I don't think that they'd be sort of a 
an intrusive presence in the landscape. Is there any way, you know, can I sort of gain present a better picture of what the trees would look like or show other things from the neighborhood? Or is is that like sort of what's what are the options moving forward if that I would like to keep the trees? Understandable. So that's a great point and great question. Um, there is an option of being able to continue it um, from that perspective allow you to gain additional uh, information uh, to present back to the commission uh, regarding the trees or clarifications regarding the trees. Uh, but that would that would continue until next month. And so well, or until additional information. That's it. it doesn't guarantee you'll be on that grant, but you should receive the additional information so they've got something you can look at in the spring. I guess I also want clarification that um, the code in the Victorian Village Handbook does give a, a level of four feet for hedges and things in the front of the houses. When, so this is within that, that recommendation. So I wasn't sure what is it uh, sort of like visual density of the trees that would be the issue or what's the. Kimberly, I'm going to need some help regarding that because I don't have the book in front of me regarding the sites that you that you cited. So. I don't have any. I've got it in the staff reports. They've got the Apple Apple code and the guidelines. Let's see if I can get to that. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get to that. <clears throat> Just aesthetically, the idea that these things are going to be supported off these stakes with wires isn't really elegant. Doesn't look like a fence. I mean, if and, you know, if you're crazy about these, I could see you pulling them back in the middle of your yard and having one or two as individual pieces within a landscape, but um, as a fence and how it's presented. Well, and that's an interesting comment about location of it again, a fence. Versus, More of an agricultural. Versus, versus a plant, you know, tree, you know, essentially a tree that you are training. Landscape, um, but yeah, I agree that you know, and to me, it's we're hitting four foot height. You know, it's kind of the opacity, which you can make an argument either direction, but it's also the appropriateness of material of of said fence kind of along the perimeter of a, of a property. Um, that I think it's uh, this is maybe challenging. Okay, and and I also want to say, you know. Uh, Again, very creative. I think it could be successful. It is a big precedent because, as you saw right before us, someone could see that and say, I want to post and I want to put wires and I want to grow morning glories on them because I think they're beautiful and I think it acts like a fence. And there's no distinction between training fruit trees and letting some other plant grow on. So, very slippery slope when we get into these. Morning glory fence would be useful. <laughs> 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 so. uh, sorry, they're not my favorite. <laughs> That's just me. Right. And I guess, I mean, I guess sort of the distinction that I'm trying to get at, uh, uh, that I'm sort of, is, is, it, is there a sort of a, a code that I'm working with here, or is it just a question of sort of aesthetic judgment? Or sort of, um, I think it's both. I think it's both actually. The fruit tree so close to the sidewalk, uh, you know, post materials. Um, for example, you know, you wouldn't see those posts in a front yard application. You would see those in a backyard application with a dog ear panel attached to it. So I think it's, I think it's both. How far? Does your property go towards the, the greenhouse? Does it go? The, the property line is right where that wall is. You can see a little stone. I'm also going to know a different part of code, the standards for site improvement that says landscaping, parking, utility, or service areas, walkways, or similar site improvement should be compatible to each other, to the subject property or structure, as well as adjacent to these properties, open spaces, and the overall environment. Thank you. Does that help? Yeah, I mean, I did talk to my neighbors before I did this, and so they were. I understand. Is there a is there a desire for us to continue to allow you to come back with some additional clarification 
or do you want us to go ahead and vote today? And that goes back to either option. Will we vote collectively as one vote that amends the vote or amends the application to get rid of the post and the proposed um, trees? Or if you're adamant about it, we would do two votes or we could break it down into two parts. We could do the landscaping portion of what's been installed currently minus the posts. And then we would come over here to the trees and post as a kind of a part B to the landscaping. Yeah. Um, I, th I mean, I like checking things off my list. So it sort of seems like if you all are okay with the landscaping, then maybe let's check that off and then I can come back. Is that what I'm and that's that's fair to do as well because we could yes, yes yes we could do that okay so item a is landscaping that's installed that was part of the <clears throat> the current conditions minus the post can I get a motion um, to approve this as installed well motion for Applicant VB two one one zero zero one one to approve install landscaping minus the separate from the, the installed posts as, as installed. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Go ahead and do a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so item A has been so check that one off your list. <laughs> okay. So I don't be. Um, so with that one, we can just go ahead and ask for a vote of continuing that portion. That would allow you to come back uh, with some clarification and working with staff to come back onto the agenda for that item. Is that fair? Okay, perfect. Uh, can I get a motion to continue part B, which is the post and the subsequent proposed fruit trees as a fence? Motion for application BB21-10-011 uh, B for uh, continuous continuum of um, the uh, fruit trees and uh, and support. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All right, vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. So it's continued to until you work with staff and get back on the agenda with that. I was just I was just kind of thinking. So right now the posts are in. Um, so that means the you wouldn't be able to check off the. So since it's continued and she's still working with us, she's that, okay. That yeah, she's like, okay. Okay. That was, <laughs> I just wanted to be sure about that one. Yeah, her club officers will work with us okay. and check in and to see some things sometimes. And if they know that you're working with us, they're not going to okay. do that issue any of their follow up. But she's got a week from today to submit additional okay. items. But I wanted to mention that because I know it takes me a couple of days to turn things around. And okay, great. Um, and so, what in terms of additional materials might that might be alternative plans or it might be sort of comparisons in the neighborhood or <coughs> makes sense. Yes, we can all, all, exactly. Yeah, very helpful. Okay. Thank you so much for talking it through. We appreciate it. And then we move on to agenda item number six, which is BB dash 21 dash 10 dash 0. This is the 316 West 1st Avenue. Um, this is another property that a code violation has been issued for work prior to leaving approval. This is to repair existing chimney trees brick. Uh, the replacement lights to gray and not the original red. Commissioners at the business meeting requested a picture of the chimney before it was replaced and installed. Uh, staff checked the file and found a 1982 and 1989 photograph of the house, which shows a red brick chimney with corbeling and chimney pots. Uh, this has been lost over the years due to unimproved repair work. Um, included is a June 2019 screenshot from Google Street View, which shows the red chimney with the previous seven print repair work. You can kind of see the border is slightly different between the uh, red bricks. Uh, staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the chimney be replaced with red bricks to match the original fireplace and keep consistent with the chimney that they stick. The chimney should also include the portland from the 1989 photograph and the 
previous dimensions, the chimney pots do not need to be reconstructed. Uh, basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116.11 and standards for alterations, specifically 1, 2, 5, and 6. May I state your name, get your sworn in, sir? Kevin Sussman. Do you agree to tell the truth or nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Perfect. Go ahead, sir. Do you have anything to add to the presentation? Yeah, the only thing I'd like to say is, that, you know, this wasn't done with the, the thought to just, hey, we're just going to willy nilly throw up some bricks because the chimney fell over during a storm. We were, you know, with the pandemic and everything, having a very difficult time trying to find someone to do the repairs, get them all materials necessary. During that time while we were trying to do this, the building inspector came by, filed suit, had a suit pending in the court. Uh, the owner of the property wanted to get this done as soon as possible used a natural brick it is gray it's not a painted gray uh, where you guys are not you know bricks come in various different colors depending on the minerals how long they're fired in the kilns and things like that so it is a natural color um to be 100 percent honest i don't know why they chose gray as opposed to what was there i think that's what was available at the time they wanted to get this repaired and back up as opposed to there had been a tarp up there and all that so we would just request at least you know, to be able to keep the same chimney as opposed to, I mean, to tear down a chimney we just pay for. And worst case, if we need to, we're willing to, you know, paint it a red to match surrounding chimneys and everything. It's aesthetically pleasing. It matches actually the coloring of the house. The owner of the current house has only had it for a couple of years. I know I mean, you saw pictures of what it looked like in 1989. It looks a whole lot better now. He's trying to keep it that way and keep maintaining it and make sure it stays in a nice, clean, aesthetically pleasing manner. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? Uh, I get where they're coming from. Um, and obviously you could go paint it. I'm not so sure that's successful. But I think if you just put a top cap on it to kind of mimic the original, I think we'd be okay. That's my take on it. Any other thoughts? It seems kind of short too. Yeah, actually. just the height of this. Mm -hmm. Is the height? It, it is quite short. Is yeah, the height? It is a little short, and that's and that's actually was intentional because of the concern. That's one of the reasons the engineer who came by and looked at it after it fell said it did fall. The, it was extremely tall, which being on a corner, there's nothing stopping any wind or any kind of weather elements coming from the side, and it pushed it right over and. Because of the height it was, it actually hit the house next door. Who, needless to say, he was a little upset about the damage yeah. it caused to his house. So they went a little bit shorter just for safety precautions. It definitely looks better than the tarp. <laughs> so, what about so is that the neighbor's chimney that I'm seeing in the back? There's yes. two chimneys. Yeah, the neighbor shows up in that picture. This is the neighbor's chimney. Okay. So yeah, so I think we do it. Uh, a couple more courses, corbel it out, and yep. then and then cap it off. Yep. That's what I think. So are we all against the painting at the red? I think you know, unless unless you have a really good faux painter, it's never going to, to come out. I would rather see, as Sean says, a couple of, a couple, couple uh, layers of brick and then core bolt. I think it'll look much better. Would it be fair then to note in the motion that should the chimney ever need to come back down and be rebuilt, that it's rebuilt with the red bricks? Yes, you could say that. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. Right. And so it's probably what we're saying is if we take the photograph that Kim had found of the existing profile and height of the brick uh, of the chimney, we want to utilize the existing materials that are on the chimney to replicate horribly in the height. We would actually request not to go that height. I don't feel it's safe over the years with the wind coming and weather. I mean, if you look at the one neighbors, it's very tall and 
that's what caused this to topple, topple over. Yeah, I think that there's. Well, it's new. It should have structural integrity. Um, it, it should, but again, and, any large item, you know, that's. It has and I also, problems. I'm just wondering, even if that meets code at that yes. height, just because you have neighbors and. It does. The building inspector, the code inspector, actually came by and approved it. Told me everything was fine according to him, and then he, that's when. And I apologize, I didn't know about it. He mentioned that I then needed to come here and get out. Interesting. I just think one of the one of the defining characters, you know, characteristics of the neighborhood is is are the chimneys, and there are some pretty significant height, you know, high chimneys in the in the neighborhood, you know, out of the corners, by themselves, very open and susceptible to wind, but being able to maintain them, I, I really think that the chimney failed because of not necessarily lack of maintenance by the current homeowner, it's just over a period of time. So. Um, so I'm I'm more I'm more for just personally the matching the height and the existing conditions height and profile of what it was before, but having some concessions on the material given the condition that we're under right now. Right. I agree. I agree. Yes. Okay. Um, is is that acceptable, sir? As a to me, yes. I'm sure the neighbor won't like it. But okay. All right. So if it falls on the side, understandable. Um, is there a motion, guys, by any chance? Yeah, I make a motion for uh, application 21 10 012316 West First Avenue. Um, and the motion also uh, bring it up to its original height uh, and finish it with four belling, keep the same material. Was there anything else, Sean? I would just say to, to match to match the existing the existing drawing or photograph that staff provided. Right. Is there a second? And if it's rebuilt too. Oh yes, yes. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And if it was ever rebuilt, it would go back to its original structure. Right, yeah. right, right. And for the record, when we rebuilt it, we had no pictures of what it previously looked like. Understandable. Thank you. A second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we are skipping application number seven because they went through. We're moving on to application number eight, which is BB 21 10 0124. This is for 61 West 2nd Avenue. Uh, this is a code violation issued per work prior to review and approval. The application is to remove the existing back concrete and backyard paving and replace per submitted site plan. This includes installing reclaimed bricks in the tree wall, replacing the existing rear composite deck with a different colored composite material, uh, plant various landscaping in the front and backyards, lay out hardscape in the front and backyards too. And there is going to be a square garden feature installed in the front yard. Uh, this will be a bird path, approximately 30 inches high and about 20 inches round. And uh, I have in here, it's going to sit on a 20 by 20 concrete pad. And when we get to the applicant, he can correct me if I'm wrong. I still need to have type up. Um, commissioners at the business meeting requested photographs of the existing deck on the clarification on when the deck was installed. One area of concrete is proposed in the front yard expanding on the previously installed wall. And is this an on-grade patio on the front yard um, people for removal appropriate? Uh, staff does not support decks as they are a suburban feature. Our recommendation would be a patio at grade. HBO staff reviewed the file and the rear porch um, was replaced in 1993. This appears to be the only rear. Um, porch deck modification and file and it would have been done in wood even though it's not specified in the approval which there is a drawing of what that um, porch replacement looks like towards the end of uh, the documents. Composite decking appears to be more popular around the mid 1990s. Uh, the applicant will also need to reach out to the Department of Public Service to see if they support the efforts in the tree line. HPO does not recommend the modification of tree lines. 
staff recommends continuation of the application to allow the applicant uh, time to submit the requested photographs. If possible, staff recommends at minimum splitting out the walkways for the approval. Uh, the staff would recommend that those be constructed as a permanent use. Basis for staff recommendation is 3116.13, the standards for site improvements, specifically A, and then City Code 3116.11, the standards for alteration, specifically 1, 2, 5, and 6. And I will note, I have been talking with the applicants since has some questions. We've gotten some more photos and some additional uh, drawings as well. Thank you. We have state your name people sworn in, sir. Steve Mark. Do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. All right, go ahead, sir. A few things I did um, I think the, the recommendation for continuation, I did make pictures that were requested. Um that she uh, the staff report had already been prepared. So okay. um, just for, for clarification. Um uh, yeah, we, we are new to Victorian Village. We moved in in November 2019. We brought COVID with us, so we're going to get to enjoy the, the name of the field <laughs> recently. Um, and so uh, we had um, some um, crumbling concrete that was, uh, I wear flip flops a lot, and I literally ripped the top of my foot because they were so off level and they broke. I had no idea that on sidewalks I had to reach out. So I apologize. We did start this work without coming here first year. Now we're here to work with you. We are we hired Susan Jacobs Grant um, as a landscape architect to design our landscape plan. We have the intention of making some uh, big changes to um, uh, what we consider a very beautiful house in, in the neighborhood. And we just want to you know work with the style of it and improve the. Uh, Exterior aesthetics of the home. So um, we uh, are approaching there. We do not currently have walkways in because when we you know, received our violations, we immediately stopped as I approach and move forward. I would love to be able to get walkways put in before the weather gets hard. Although it's 80 degrees today, we're not going to have this much of it. So you know, I'm here to to see what you would need from me. Uh, we definitely, um, there's a staff recommendation on uh, putting reclaimed brick in the tree line. We, we can remove that from our plan. You will see a detailed plan if you want to put that plan up. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it is a whole site plan that, that we spent months with our, our architect on and then uh, revisited. It's, it's way up. They're going to be right above that. Yeah, that would be. So, um, and it, it, you know, it, it is actually going to be very nice. We attempted to keep with plants that are we see in our neighborhood. Um, there's some boxwoods, there's some, some hostas that grow in shade because we've got some very mature trees in our yard. Um, there, there is a deck. I know, I know that you mentioned the deck. That was one of the, the issues that came up with uh, the two commissioners when I was here at the business meeting. The deck is when I hear suburban, and I, it's not an elevated deck coming off a house that was built on a hill. This, there's, there's, if you would please, if you could go to the, the pages, a couple pages down from there, get to that one in a minute. So, this right here, it is meant to hug the ground. We have a cellar access door that makes this part of our yard, which is right outside our house very unusable and so we, we spent some time trying to come up with the appropriate way of minimizing the effects of this cellar door um, and making that very usable for, you know to eat and enjoy um, you know, dinners and, and such so you will see the cellar door in the center middle picture if you look over to the left you'll see kind of the dotted lines that's where this would be i anticipate that it would be one step up more than likely to that deck, um, which means it's, you know, we're, we're not building a monster. We're building something that will make another room in our backyard. We're in here, you, you, you get up. I like compartmentalized rooms in my landscaping, and this is, you know, 
a way to use a part right now that really isn't usable right now. So, so with that, you know, take any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. Any uh, comments? And it, I mean, I can start with a lot of them. And so, do you want to? Do you want to break them? Do you want to break this apart? Like we're front to back, or do you want to just go for it? Well, I'll just give an overall okay. comment. I, okay. I think the, the plan is, is well thought out, and I appreciate the desire to kind of break this into perhaps um, I, you know, I, I also kind of acknowledge the, the notion of deck in this situation is probably the wrong term for what is being installed here and maybe the should be viewing this is not a traditional deck with elevated to 30 inches and railing uh, around the perimeter of the of a platform and change of material. And so I think that's maybe the way we should be looking at this. Um, certainly, maybe the question is the, the appropriateness of the material for that natural wood versus product. So the, maybe the other point here is the, the sidewalks in terms of appropriateness of material. Um, I you know I I think there's enough going on otherwise some uh, improvements in property with softscape that using concrete for the walks doesn't bother me per se. Um, you know I I, I can see in the front of the property I would love to see a natural stone problem off with if possible. Um, but also understand patients who are awesome. Well, it's perfect. It's all. There we go. Sorry, Tim. I almost lost everything. I was almost up. So that almost failed on me. Sorry about that. Awesome. So I can appreciate the design. Um, I can appreciate outside rooms. I think the platform, any way you look at it, whether it's a platform or the deck, it's a very slippery slope. I can't tell you how many cellar doors are on Italian eights like yours. It's, it's, it's an elegant solution, but I mean, it could lead 20 million ways. And again, I think it could be just as elegant without it and letting it be what it is. My two cents. Yeah, I'm just kind of kind of thinking back. Um, I think the two steps, I think the height of the proposed platform, I think that, that there's I think when I when I was first um, joined the commission, I think there was one um, kind of condition very similarly, um, and I think that it was it was the the number of steps to get up to as well that kind of confirmed that it was a thing. Um, so just I would agree uh, if there was an ability of being able to possibly reduce the height or things of that nature that may be beneficial, um, and it's more just a material change in the landscape. I, you know, I could see that, uh, but given the height, I know I understand that the height is more so geared towards hiding, you know, as a solution uh, from that perspective. So, understandable. Um, so, that's just my thoughts on uh, the platform or the deck. Uh, as far as materiality, I think the only, I mean, the landscape plan, I, I, I agree. I, I mean, the whole idea behind the landscape plan, I think everything is is very well done. I think it's just materiality of some of the, the locations in front, if is, is are they all concrete? Are they all solid? Are they you know pervious materials? Are they impervious materials? Or what is that material that is you know the the, the two islands in the front yard? Um, um, so could we go to the plan and, and perhaps because I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. Is that all concrete? The two islands or the two rooms in the front yard? In the front front yard, yes. there, there's there's not a, 
specifically in the front yard mapping of the road. This is what we did, and, and it's been, in, in fact, I'm sorry, it might be better for us to go to the color picture of just the front yard. I'm right there. Yep. Yeah. So the, the burgundy color is, is the existing walk, walkway as it sits. The orange is kind of what we would be removing concrete-wise in the, in the front yard, and the blue would be what we were adding. We are adding about 4% more concrete in the front yard. That's what that drawing represents. Okay. So does that help you? That does help. Okay. That does help. So I was trying to understand if this is the geometry that's being proposed. Right against the geometry that's shown in the other plan, but it's more of a comparison of how much concrete you're removing right. versus how much concrete that will be present in the end mm -hmm. if your landscape plan was implemented. Yeah, we calculated to be about 4% more concrete in the front yard. That, that helps, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Concrete on the right hand side of the plan is 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 oh, I can't tell with that material. Maybe that's not concrete. I see that this is concrete now. These are not. This is the front. Yes. Yeah, I think those are plant beds. Those are plant beds. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all going to be softscape. It's going to be grass and pastas, uh, boxwoods trimmed. I think at twenty four inches. Um, it's out in the plan. I just don't remember yes, exactly. Sir. But yeah, the front yard is going to be a lot of softscape yeah. with some the, the concrete that is basically the current area of concrete three feet to me. That that helped clarification for the standpoint. I just didn't understand the color drawing. So I can thank you. So the staff is going to share some of their concerns. I'm going to bring it up and show this because I don't have giant power here. It is the kind of proposed concrete patio space here. Do we typically see those or do we feel that is appropriate? It, it's a probably a unique condition just given the circulation needs. It, it, the way I'm interpreting this in terms of kind of you have the the two you know stairs and the, the secondary porch and then the access around drives either a odd geometry or kind of in this case the squaring off to create more deliberateness maybe to the that geometry. Yeah, and I also think how it's layered. I mean, yeah. it's set up left and right, and then you go through these pieces, and then sort of you veer off, and that's part of the walkway, and it's just kind of squaring off the wall. Now, understanding these two areas in the front in terms of the focus and how you kind of, and I think that's a great term in terms of layering, it's just how you experience that piece of concrete. I don't think it's going to be experienced as a a, a large area of concrete in the front yard. I think it's, you know, it's going to be that diagonal path to be able to get you through from the front. Yeah, back and transition back to sidewalk. So I, I'm okay with that from that perspective. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so with those clarifications, um, so I guess, <clears throat> do we want to, uh, I think you, you probably heard most of us in terms of the commentary related to the deck. Um, is there is there any concerns if we were to vote on this exclusive? Um, the proposed deck or to allow you to go ahead and move forward. Uh, maybe the, the concrete portions and and I, I guess not necessarily 100% trying to break this down. I was just trying to be considerate to some of the concerns that you had with the weather changing. Okay. And, yeah, I appreciate that. and then maybe there's an opportunity of reevaluating the rear yard and you can bring that component back possibly. Um, yeah. I don't know, Kimberly, does that sound like that's a, an amenable? That, that would sound um, okay, like splitting it at, at some 
point. I don't know. Do we want to uh, at least approve the bot up to like the group? Well, I think the you? only thing that's bothering us is the deck. So I think right. we should put it out there and pull the deck out. Okay. And so either it gets approved or it doesn't get approved. Yeah. But they can go on with the rest of the art. And if they come up with something that they want to shoot at us, so be it. And that might even be a special committee. Uh, whatever you call it. You want some committee. So it's with the deck, is it the material of the deck? It's the deck. It's the deck. Because there, there's a possibility, you know, if you're using two by sixes and, and you know, you put another inch and a half on it, that's maybe eight inches off the ground, nine inches off the ground. Still a deck. Still, yeah, okay. yeah, that's. So I guess we could go ahead and vote. Um, if you want to go that way. And do. But I, I definitely wouldn't want to go ahead and get lost in because we have no clean way to know how smart we're back. Okay. My own problem. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. So we'll do kind of a, a kind of a, 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 a vote of. We're going to split this into just A and B. Let's just do A and B. Yeah. Let's do A and B. Just be consistent. Thank you, guys. Um, so A would be um, a motion uh, to approve um, the landscape conditions and the walks as proposed on the plan. Minus the deck component at the rear of the home. Yep. So I make a motion. Yes, sir. Oh, make a motion. One clarification. Um, oh, for the, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just thought I, I circled something because of what Kimberly mentioned, and it was the right of way. It was the landscape and the right of way. I think do we. That's something that we. So we need to pull the out. applicant has said that they will pull that out. So we'll okay. get that as a modified. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Application 2110-01461, West 2nd Avenue. Uh, first part A, uh, as submitted. A second. Is there any additional discussion? Oh, as submitted without the deck. Yeah. Let's just make yeah. that clear. Yeah. And the... Right away, items have been removed. Gotcha. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item A is passed. Okay. So, items 2110-01461 West 2nd Avenue. Um, and this is voting on the second part of this uh, application, which is the proposed deck. We'll motion to continue. Right? We're just going to continue that. Yep. Motion to continue. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to continue that portion of the application. Jim, can I ask a follow up? Um, what direction should I be looking for on the deck? I mean, what, is, is there some feedback that you can give me on? So, I think some of it was alternate designs, alternate materials. I'm looking at you guys to see what this is. Correct. That's correct. I feel like, yeah, that's I could see blue stone, large, rectangular blue stone. And from a design perspective, if anything that translates out of the, the development of that deck solution and it challenges what we've already approved today include that information in that next application good point just to i'm, I'm sorry I'm I'm just, that again. yes sir. so if 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 you know, with your landscape architect if you guys are evaluating this deck and a proposed option maybe saying hey bluestone and if that bluestone was you know it, maybe it prompted other changes in the landscape as a result of this solution for the deck mm -hmm. please bring that information back to as well and then that way we can go ahead and take care of all of it Understood. so all right. is that okay thank you sir truly appreciate you working with us thank you, thank you. Thank you. moving on to application number nine this is BZ Deck 21 Deck 10 Deck 015 1188 Deck Alley. This is for new landscape and hardscape in the yard. 
backyard with half of the neighbor patio, turf fire pit benches, and a water feature, adding the landscape lighting, and then existing storage shed is to be updated. The commissioners at the business meeting were unclear where the storage screening was going as it did not appear clearly in the 3D rendering. Census over 60 typically require a building permit. Staff does not support fences or storage areas over the site. And the item proposing to the commission is the proposed lighting appropriate or is it too suburban? Staff recommends approval of the application with the consideration that none of the fence or screening exceeds 60 tall. And the basis for staff recommendation is 3116.13, the standards for site improvements, specifically A and City Code 31 at 16.11, the standards for alteration, specifically 1, 2, 5, and 6. Go ahead and state your names and get you sworn in. Noah Mabry. Do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Is there uh, just kind of anything to add or walk us through uh, what's being proposed? Yeah, so essentially what we're doing is we are going to um, rip out most of what you see here in these uh, existing images here. Um, the stoop outside the door is staying, uh, but the brick we're going to demo, add in a porcelain tile patio, uh, as well as uh, artificial turf. Uh, everything will be overlaid on did uh, gravel, so there will be water will be able to pass down through that. Uh, we will be screening the yeah yeah. So we will be adding also. So we have the tile, we'll have the turf, and then we will also have a compacted gravel patio where the fire feature will sit on. We will have a water feature as well as a sh uh, shed area, and I believe I have sent updated renderings to that shed. Okay. Yes, they are included in here. Okay, perfect. Um, and then we will also be screening the AC. The fence will be um, removed and we will be doing a new fence. The 3D rendering here actually shows it pretty accurately as to what it will end up looking like. Um, and then on the alley side of the of the home, so the side of the home here, we will also be just doing a new landscaping bed. Um, so we will be removing existing uh, trees that are there and we'll add some grasses and a uh, evergreen. Thank you. Any comments? Sir? Looks from the plan that the intention is for the artificial turf to also continue between a couple of the courses. That's right. I think that detail is going to be hard to pull off. Just the nature of installation of that. Uh, we've done it several times. It looks fine. So, um, I just, I just had two comments. Um, the first one was, um, and it seems like it's probably a result of how you use your yard now. It's probably the location of the location and the height of the existing um, storage compart you know, compartment. It's proximity to that window in the rear exactly. of the home. It seems like it was really tight. Um, and then the height of that new storage was a lot taller than the fence component. Uh, so I think that was kind of challenging from an observation standpoint, looking at the renderings. Um, you mentioned the removal of, of trees, and could you be a little bit more specific to try to understand what that means? Is there... So the plan um, has an existing uh, conditions. So I believe it's the second one, if you scroll down here. Okay. Um, yeah, so you will see where it says remove existing trees. There's two arborvitaes that um, have gotten really big and obstruct the entrance to the gate that's existing here. So we are removing it and just added grasses. Okay, so that's, an, that's okay, that yeah. makes sense. A lot of times from a tree removal standpoint, we were trying to understand that. Um, and typically we would propose replacement of a tree. So if a tree remo gets removed, we're replacing a tree. But in this case, it seems like a, that's a little bit different. Um, so that, thanks for the clarification. Those are my, my only two comments that I had.
very west coast, considering we're in Ohio and we have beautiful <laughs> sunshine and rain and we can grow plants wonderfully. It's still not a bad idea to conserve water when you can. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> is there, um, just given the, the comments, just why the rest of the team is kind of thinking about additional, is just that one comment regarding the shed, its proximity and its height, is there a way to solve that? Um, so, uh, the, so just to clarify, we're the design team, uh, over in the studio here, uh, the homeowner could join us tonight, but, uh, basically you can see from the, um, image that they have that, like, really hideous rubber made yes, sir. storage thing there. Yes, sir. Uh, the idea was to essentially make the, uh, storage shed a continuation of the privacy fence. And so, uh, that can be. Kind of worked in that can be made slightly smaller and the same height as the privacy fence if we just want to make sure that it's all consistent with you know what you have to see. Programmatically, that is the location that it's currently. So you're just it's currently programmed that way. You're just maintaining that, changing the aesthetic, but we'll be able to bring that down and kind of marry it with other conditions. That's actually good. The window proximity and such, you'd be able to pull that off too as well in terms of being able to reduce it in width to be able to give some relief against the window. Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I think if we need to to bring the uh, width in a little bit and a little bit lower, then okay. we'll help ship out. Very sure. Thank you, sir. Any other comments at all? Hmm. Is there, would someone like to make a motion? So motion to approve 09 BB 21 10 015 um, as submitted with the exception that the storage shed area shall not exceed the height of the fence. I got it. I'm sorry to hold. Sorry, I'm just now noticing the lighting schedule, the uplights that are along outside of the yard along the south of the house there are a number of uplights what what are those uplighting um so one thing to note is that they are this address is in the alleyway so you know getting through there at night is a little bit uh uh can be darker than if you were on a, a actual city street so those are um technically they're an uplight fixture but they're going to be shining like at the grasses and at the base of the house okay. really they just kind of give a glow along the edge of the uh, alley to kind of give a visual cue for anybody driving through okay. thank you mm -hmm. sorry i just wanted to no, there's uh, one a fair observation mr Seaborn. sorry i read i reiterate my beautiful motion <laughs> okay awesome awesome that's yeah, look fine and we're, we're, we're addressing both the height and the width of the shed. That was pretty much correct. correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Did we miss anything, Kimberly? I don't believe so. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. I'll go ahead and go ahead and vote. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank, Thank you so much for talking. Thank you very much. We truly appreciate it. All right. Moving on to agenda item number 10. One yes, ten dash zero sixteen. This is for three four seven West Spring Avenue. This is to replace an existing rear deck and replace with a ten foot by fourteen foot composite deck, and to construct a ten foot by seven foot roof over a portion of the deck. Commissioners at the business meeting wanted to know why the wood deck wasn't being replaced with wood. HBO staff has checked the file, and there is no approval for this. This would have been put in after 1995, and the later addition was also modified at this time. As staff does not support decks, as they are still going to feature our recommendation, a guiding idea that we at ready. And since the deck has existed for a while, staff recommends it um, repaired in light time. And staff recommends approval with the condition that the deck is repaired in time. Basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116.11. These standards for alteration, specifically 
Thank you for that. Go ahead and get you sworn in. So, you state your name. Uh, James Knox with Suncraft. Zach Borovetz, Suncraft. Thank you, sir. Do you guys uh, agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you have uh, anything to add or kind of walk us through um, you yeah. know, some of the conditions that the staff has pointed out? You want to start at the rear of the house, the bottom left picture. That's the existing deck right now. It's in, um, it's in wood. As you said, it was constructed in the 90s. Um, it's currently kind of falling apart. It's not something that's kind of stable. It's not something that is eye pleasing. Um, this one would like to switch deposit uh, for many reasons uh, and also add some some roof structure over it. You go throughout the plans, you can also kind of see, but with that second picture we have, you can see the composite material. And I have a sample here. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it at all. If you guys want to see, see it at all, but um, then the railing is also going to be composite as well as the railing balusters. Pretty much the extents that's being shown is exactly the extent that's there. It's just replicated in a very future. Correct. I got you. And is the is the hood new? Is yes. That hood component will be. Yeah, new. the shed roof. The shed over roof. half of the deck is going to be new. It's going to be a, a similar proportion as the front of the house uh, porch roof. There you go. And with the. Uh, Idea of using the composite material for the decking. Um, one, it's a lot more durable. Uh, I know in a lot of the neighborhoods there, uh, down there, that um, a lot of porches are made with wood decking, and there a majority of them have been painted uh, numerous times. And over the years, they require more maintenance, more paint. Because the paint never seems to hold up on uh, decking surface as well as stains and so forth, but the they always peel and deteriorate over time. One thing about the composite material, it maintains the color. It has wood. It is a wood color finish to it, and the railing. I uh, do not have a sample of the railing. It is a solid color, uh, kind of like a dark chocolate brown. Uh, so, and it's also has the appearance of wood material as far as the shapes and profile of it. It, uh, like I said, it requires less maintenance because it will maintain its color and appearance over for uh, 30 years plus. Understandable. Perfect. Thank you. Any comments, guys? So my only comments are uh, I'm fine with rebuilding the deck with that hood. Totally against. And then the only other aesthetic is I think I would uh, frame the skirt out so you'd have horizontal and vertical. With the skirting? Yeah, just a frame, and then you'd see the verticals behind it. Sort of like lattice? No, just as it is, but I would have a frame around it. Oh, like a picture frame around yeah. the, the skirting? Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah, we could certainly uh, add that. But having the, the boards go horizontal instead of No, vertical. the boards are vertical. Okay. You just have a frame around it, so it would... On the exterior? Yes. The old, if you look on the right elevation, right there, if you zoom in on the right elevation, you can see that there's a note that mentions that the, you know, the homeowner wants to have an access panel for storage underneath. So that can happen. It'll cool. just have a, you'll just have a, uh, it'll just be cut. Because the way that we, you know, the way that we operate it, and I'll have to you know, make sure, but. Instead of having hinges, because with hinges, you know, you sort of see it sag and, you know, with gates or anything with hinges, you sort of pull it in the ground. It doesn't really operate too well. So the way that this works is something you slide and pull out. It's the operation of the, uh, of the access panel. So I'll have to see, you know, 
So you guys know what to do. Yeah, I don't think it would bother. And yeah, we, we should be able to add a, a trim ring. A tr uh, it's just a, a picture it's just frame around that, that vertical uh, skirting area to accent the elevation. Any other comments? Um, I'm from a materiality standpoint, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned with the material. Uh, there's just been a lot of discussion, uh, you know, in the past about, you know, use of Trex and, and those kind of materials, composite materials. I, I know that this, you know, deck component is something that's existing. Um, I would kind of go back to staff's recommendation in terms of materiality um, and not necessarily changing the material. Uh, even though that there's a durability concern, uh, but I think if this if this deck came back in as a as a as a new feature, I don't think that we would probably approve it. So, um, so you're basically saying everything's in time. It would be in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that would be without the proposed shed roof. Right? That's correct. Without the shed roof, then it would just be. One option as in kind materiality to just be able to continue to use the element that is existing. If the materiality begins to change, um, I think that's when we need to make this thing appropriate. A good point. So, regarding when I talk to the homeowner, so regarding the whole project, so the main thing was the composite, you know, uh, the maintenance, the low maintenance was the big thing. So if he, you know, decides that, you know, the thing was not wood. So if he decides to keep it, what's kind of with that? Is it fine the way it is? So if it's been existing so long that you don't know when can move it We need to get it in so we have that on file. Because it is so cool and not enforce this code on it. Yeah. So there's a lot of unknown. So the commission is saying it's okay as it is, we wouldn't approve it now, but since it's so dead, there's no point in just tearing it down and starting from scratch. Like, if you want to um, repair it in one time, that would be possible. Okay. Commissioners can correct me if I'm wrong. That's exactly what, that, that's what I was right. recommending, yes. And then regarding the roof structure, the shed roof, what was the, uh, problem with that. I don't necessarily think there's a problem with it. I just think that we're 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 modifying. So the first thing is the deck. So that's yeah. we address the deck. Um, once we address the deck, we have to address the deck and bring it to being appropriate and then look at the hood as it relates to the appropriate solution. Right. So it's hard to say that the hood is appropriate right now given what it's landing on and what it's supported. Is the thing that's that's tripping us up. That's kind of the, the discussion point. So if it were to be treated pine or any you know, wood decking, yeah. then that, uh, the structure, the, the the shed roof on top could be fine. Yeah, I don't think. I think we would no. look at it as a, a porch. We would look at this as a holistic design. So the minute you cross sort of the Rubicon of changing it in any way, so. In kind means I replace every single thing that's there with the same material, only a new material. The minute I change material or change design or add a piece to it, then it, then we have to look at it holistically as a new thing. And as Sean said originally, we we wouldn't pay deck, nor would we okay like an overhang. It would it would have to turn into sort of a porch, not porch and a deck. Does that make sense? So if it was extended to the, the end of the house, the full 14 feet, rather than seven in the middle. So I'm thinking, you know, some options as far as, you know, how things can be changed uh, to keep the, you know, the roof structure on top. So if it, so if it was covered the full length of the deck, that would classify more as porch is what you're saying. That is, that is, that is correct. I think if we would, we would review it so I think what 
we have an option. So number one is um, materiality, right? So if you have a two by six deck, right? Two by six decking, walnut wood, treated wood, that piece of wood would be removed and a, and a like exact piece of wood would go back in its place. That's, that can happen today, like for like, without the hood. Yep. If the materiality has to change on whatever, whether it be a vertical piece of wood or if it's a horizontal piece of wood, the profile, the materiality of it has to change, then we need to look at it holistically as a new project, inclusive of the extent of the porch or the hood. What we don't want to do is we don't want to have a deck and then we have a porch component and it's they're mixing. We want to have an appropriate solution that gets determined by whatever direction you guys want to move forward with. So and then regarding the skirting, if we were to do it the same way, you'd still want it horizontal or sorry, with the, with the frame border around it, you would still frame it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think what's just if we were to let's just say I think it's clear in terms of why we are the like for like option if they want to just keep the deck and just the like for like but if you want commentary regarding possibly um, <clears throat> I should say continuing this application or you to go back to the drawing board and then come back we could offer some comments that would help you if that's probably the direction that you're going to go if you're going to continue that conversation with the homeowner, yeah, would that be helpful? Yeah, yes, it would. Okay, so if we were looking at this as a new application, new material, and you know it was appropriate materials, not the timber tech, would there be any concern with the extent of the platform versus the extent of the porch? Good. Uh, yeah, I would see that stopping at where the hood stops and steps down um, or having it extend and be redesigned as a side porch all the way down to the line. Now, the other thing is in the rear elevation, you can see that there's a window. Um, if it were to extend all the way out, the pitch of the roof would have to either change. So it would either have to become a, a rubber roof. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Would that be, that would be something that I could kind of work up? Okay. Yeah, yeah I right think now, you just have to create a post as uh, with the shingle match the existing shingling on the house. Mm -hmm. but yeah, we, we have enough roof pitch there to, mm -hmm. to do that. That's the reason, that's one of the reasons why we didn't extend the porch all the way to the end because then you're going to have a you know not matching material, mm -hmm. I mean, rubber roof. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far back that goes. I know. I know another big thing was um, the reason why they wanted to do shed roof versus a rubber roof was because there's a large tree. I know in one of the pictures you might be able to see it. I know that they have a fairly couple large trees in their backyard. They drop branches all the time. And by having a flat roof, they stick and collect. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that we're necessarily saying that you have to solve the problem with a flat roof solution. I mean, we understand that there are some challenges with the existing conditions. You got existing windows, you got an existing door on, you know, the right side of elevation. It's kind of in the background. We understand that there's some existing cons constraints, but I guess what we're seeing is whatever solution that maybe you're coming up with that the horizontal surface that you step on is, has a strong relationship to the extent that is covered as a porch condition. Okay. And so if it's an L, if it's, you know, whatever the geometry that you guys come up with, we're open to it. But I think that that's it needs to be porch like instead of being deck like. Okay. Yes, sir. Does that help clarify? Yes. Okay. So, would you want just a motion to continue, and then you would be able to go back and work with the homeowner and come back with some additional solutions? Yes. I can't wait. I also want to know if staff would recommend either painting or staining the deck or sliding the weight to weather a little bit, but to add that to add a bit of protection to it and uh, paint colors do need approval as well. That's typically what we suggest for uh, us. 
rear yard fences. So I think it would be appropriate to paint our stadium with that as well. Gotcha. That's in the like for like option that she's referencing, right? That was, did you understand what she was clarifying? Yeah. That's fine. Okay. I just want to be sure. I just want to be sure. It's hard to tell behind mask if you if you got it. <laughs> so I know you went quiet for a second, so I just wanted to be sure. Okay, so guys, can we have a motion to continue? Motion to continue for excuse me, zero one six three forty seven West First Avenue. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. We continue. Thank you guys for working. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Next time, let me know before you meet. Yeah, I'm yes. sorry. Theo, come on, man. Thanks, Thomas. I did it. Yes. Thomas gets a pass because he was there at the business meeting. So thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, Thomas, for everything. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See you next month, man. I won't see you until next month when uh, I was going to say something afterwards. So thank you, sir. I okay. appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. So application number 11 is BZ-21-10-2022. Thank you. This is 291 West First Avenue. This is to construct a new fourth car concrete parking deck at the middle of the lot. Had will measure 21 feet wide by 38 feet 7 inches long with a three foot wide brick border. And that's included in this. And this is also removing existing chain link fence and constructing a new six foot board on board privacy fence. Commissioners at the business meeting wanted to know what the base for these papers are in the parking pad. Um, typically, a more permeable surface is requested for the rear yard. Is concrete appropriate in this place? In this case, staff does recommend approval of the application with any modifications or clarifications made by the commission. Basis for staff recommendation is 3116.13, the standards for site improvement, specifically A, and 3312.43, required service for parking. I am also going to thank Julie for. Sitting here that long, I hadn't realized you were in the application or what was just that out. Got some work done. So <laughs> and Julie's already sworn in from earlier. So, um, so this is currently a, a four unit building. Um, my client's actually going to take the um, one side of the building and make it a three unit building. So his intention is to, in the future, build a garage. So that's why we have the concrete slab with the paper border. So the papers are just on sand um, with the idea that we can take up the pavers and pour the it's footer fair. and do the garage, but that the concrete base for the garage itself is already there. So that's why it was designed the way it was, just to save the cost of having to redo the concrete. And the, the, the brick border lets, gives us enough space to dig the footer without disturbing the slab. I think the fence is pretty self explanatory. Thank you. All right. Um, any comments? I don't have any comments. Um, my only comment is just maybe word of caution with the. I appreciate the kind of your explanation of the kind of setting the, the slab for the future in the, the brick border um, on the you know, concrete and then the brick sand adjacent that's inevitably going to settle a little bit differently. Yeah, I, I talked to him about that because I said, you know, we get some differential settlement, but he seems pretty confident he can get a good base in there. So okay. that was my concern too. Motion or yeah, make a motion for uh 21-10-017219. Two two one West First Avenue, as submitted. Second. You have a discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion. Thanks, Julie, for hanging out. Thanks, Phil.
move on to application number 12 and just as a quick note, I requested a five minute break before we get to the conceptuals. Um, we're not quite there yet, but just to put it above everybody's here. So this is application BE-21-10-18. This is for 978 to 980 Forest Avenue. This application is to paint the fish scale siding. Benjamin Moore Flint, the trim painted Benjamin Moore satchel, siding painted Benjamin Moore coastline, the wood will be repaired and replaced in like kind with damage, to remove and replace existing gutters and downspout, replace the case style gutters with the half round gutters, remove and replace all existing windows with the pallet curvia. This includes removing the plywood over the first story front window, add a metal panel for truth. Install new front doors, remove the bow brick skirting, and replace with wood lattice that would be in our coastline. Uh, the existing fence in the front yard is to be removed, and a new six foot tall horizontal wood privacy fence in the rear yard and proposed set of fence would be painted the back of the coastline and replace the original wood siding with a smooth finish lap smart siding. Uh, the pellet impervia window is noted as the only type of window on the approved windows list, just as a note. The metal panel for troop is being suggested on the porch. And is this appropriate? Uh, HBO staff notes that the current site on the house is original and it looks like it's in good condition. The fish scale siding also looks like it's in good condition and that seems to be routine. Staff recommends resizing the downsized windows and scale to measure drawings are submitted of that trim. From the photos, it appears that. Some of the windows have been downside over here over the year and that can be replaced the window should fit the original settings. Uh, gutters need to be appropriate for the structure, and the current OG or the case style gutters are not. The applicants half round gutters are supported by staff. Uh, staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the original siding be retained and repaired and replaced as needed. Um, the approved windows list notes that the pellet and curvia are the casing only, and that another window from the approved list should be selected. Uh, the cottage windows on the first floor need to be retained. Windows that have been downsized need to be returned to the original sizes, and scale to measure drawings and trim need to be submitted, and doors need to be from the Victorian Village guidelines. Basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116.11, the standards for alteration, specifically 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 11. And the Victorian guidelines on the windows and doors, what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Could you, could you state your name and get your sworn in, sir? Sure, David Bonning. Do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Perfect. Do you have anything to add and to walk us through that very detailed report? I just <laughs> bought the property a couple weeks ago, my wife and I did, and uh, it's in a lot of disrepair and just trying to. Get it fixed up. Understand. Did you, before we kind of get into commissioner comments, did you um, did you pick up on some of the items that staff is recommending changes to your application, or at least suggested changes and amendments that would help approval? Did, were some of those things understandable and picked up? Yeah, one of the things I I just picked up was um, I really preferred it. Um, choose the Hella Impervia for all the windows, including the picture windows. Um, I, th I think it would give an overall better um, look and aesthetic to the exterior of the property if they were all the same with new window. Um, because there are quite a few transoms, um, the ones over the, the front doors there, and then there's two transoms that are currently covered with plywood over the back doors as well. Just really feel like that would give a way better look if those were all the Pella and Pervia. Very helpful. Any comments or there was a lot, there was a lot said. So um Yeah, I, I know that was just one of one of the things I picked yeah. up on there. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. All right, so this is a pretty big application, just from a standpoint of what's being proposed. Um so just think about Landscaping wise, I think the removal of items is pretty self explanatory, right? Those are things that will be in kind. So there's nothing there that we should be really concerned with, right? 
front the, the front fence, the, the fence in the rear, you know, changing that out. That, that all of that is in kind of what we would see with the front. I would note that front fence was not an approved fence. Uh, it was put in, I think, shortly before the property was sold by the previous owner. Okay. Just from what I can tell from pictures. He, he told me he put it up for uh, people walking their dogs by and dogs going to the bathroom in, in the front yard. So he just threw it up there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I'm just going to start. I'm just going to pick some of these things up if that's okay. Uh, painting start with the hard ones first. Existing so side. Might, well, yeah. Existing, existing side. side. Let's just do that. Existing side. So I think the recommendation is obviously existing siding is you have, you know, profile, uh, fish scale maintaining that. The existing siding has been noted as being in good condition. Yeah, there are some, to see some photos. Makes sense. Um, there are some elements of repair. But it doesn't constitute uh, actually residing it with new siding material. It's actually in a lot, lot worse shape than what the pictures make it out to be. Um, there's holes, gaps between most of the uh, lap siding um, itself. Um, previous owner was spraying all kind of uh, spray foam in the bigger gap areas. Uh, but it is a lot worse than what the photos make it out to be. And property, it's not airtight, it's not watertight. And I'd really like to replace that siding. Um, I had a conversation with David Daniel, a um, manager at the building department. He suggested to keep the original lap wood siding, go over top of that with the new product, um, party plank or what I had proposed with that LP lap siding, but talking with a couple different contractors, I'm leaning more towards the party plank, um, just durability wise. Um, it's more expensive, but I'd like to just put one product on and have it last a lifetime. So going back to the original wood lap siding and doing more research, and after talking with David Daniel, he was also saying that an aspect of that wood lap siding is structural. So he said they'd really like to see me keep that. And then to get the water or get the property water and air tight, we'd have to then wrap it with a Tyvek or a house wrap type material. And then go over top of that with the new hardy plank. Interesting. So given our conditions now, um, would staff be able to investigate or like what would be that process to do a deeper dive. Well, I have more fo photo evidence now um, than, than I did when I presented the original. So that would be appreciated. We might need to do a site visit, but I would need to double check with my manager about how we prefer to handle the siding on historic buildings because I don't think it's covering them up because you get into problems with uh, some of the trim and dimensions. Um, the trim detail I could leave the same and do like for like. The only thing that would change would just because it is going to be built out more. Um, the only thing that would change is the interior um, jam extension for the windows would just be a little greater. And, and, and understandable, understandable that there are solutions and, that, and that's completely understandable. And we, we agree that you're armed with what those solutions could be. We're more so looking at process. Like there's a process that we have to take steps through if there's the recommendation or suggestion of reciting an historic home. So that's so that's what we're trying to figure out is what the process is and making sure that we do that, that it would be consistent across the board of what we've kind of done for other applicants. Yeah, and staff would prefer if their scale siding was able to be saved at the beginning. Absolutely. So if you can send over those pictures, I think at this point you might need to continue the siding aspect so we can have that conversation of what you know the additional photos look like if that changes staff's recommendation and then come back to the commission with you know the updates. Now how long will that take? Because I'd really like to get it going before you know bad weather sets in because of those gaps and everything, it's it's terrible. I mean there's a big rotten area of the sill plate that needs to be addressed. And um, I mean, there's there's just all kinds of issues with it. So we need to come back to next month's meeting. And I'm not sure how we're gonna break this out because there's always a potential if at the business meeting that 
everything was okay. And none of the commissioners had any questions about it. Certain items can be coming to staff approval, but I guarantee nothing because we need to review everything. So again, that's that's process. So don't want to get hung up on the siding. So we understand that now that that's more we got a little bit more work to do to confirm what we what we do on the on the side. Okay. Windows, um, let's just go ahead and take windows if that's okay. Uh so windows, um, I think there's I know, I mean, we got a pretty healthy uh extent of windows that are on the pre-approved list. Um, we do agree in terms of what the applicant is probably proposing is being able to get, you know, all of the existing sizes and shapes back. Uh, removing of the plywood, um, you know, those existing openings and replicating those. Um, I'm presuming behind the plywood is probably trims. There's probably everything there because it looks like the plywood is over top of everything. It's just kind of, you know, adhered over top and then the new openings cut within it. So, um, but as far as the proposal of an alternate window, I'm presuming that that's not acceptable. It's because that, that window that he's proposing, I don't think is on the approved list. So the pellet and pervia is on the approved list, but it's noted only for casements. Casements, right. That's what it was. That's the fiberglass window, if I remember correctly now. I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I'm always a little hesitant when I um, are facing the uh, project windows that are in front of the window. Because if you're replacing them, sometimes things can get a little weird with the portion of the material. Yeah, uh, it work. So we do like to keep original windows if we can. I mean, it's really difficult to tell if that's an original window underneath the yeah. yeah, right now the the unit on the left hand side that's plexiglass. Those heavy windows, and there's no original trim or anything around that um, plywood. Um, but we could get back down to the original framing to see what that rough op opening would be. Okay. So is that that's something that seems like that may require a little bit more insight, and to and would you be able to you know offer photographs and we're going to work alongside of staff with siding, and then I think at the same time just given process I think maybe Kimberly can probably offer you an understanding of what other window solutions are on the pre-approved list that you may be able to evaluate. There's a there's a healthy amount and not necessarily all wood windows things of that nature that you may be able to find a product that is already approvable. That would fit your solution or what you need. So you're saying the impervia Pella window is only for casement windows? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Don't feel too bad. A lot of people miss that little asterisk. And then I one of the windows has been allowed in one of the conditions either, which is not there, there's a couple odd things across the windows. Can I propose? Doing all the pell and pervia for, yeah. throughout the, the whole place. You can. I mean, keep in mind that the commission can deny you the windows, but we typically like working with people, so hopefully we can come up with a solution. Um, you you can you can propose on this day, maybe, but your answer is going to be back. Sure. And so. I've gotten some lead times for what window they're taking right wow. now. It'd be nice to maybe get an answer on on that Pella and Pervia today. That way, you know, I, I'm maybe able to get that ordered soon. So I think what we can offer you today is an understanding that we would probably be consistent with what's been approved or what's on the pre-approved list regarding the windows. There was a lot of study that was done on sight lines and related to these different products. So if you needed something today, it would probably be most likely not appropriate or uh, uh, wouldn't it's be a case positive vote. I mean, it's a casement. It's a, it's a casement. I mean, it's a, it, we wouldn't do it. Dollar, no. We wouldn't do it. So, um, so it may be it may be worth an understanding of what's on that list and trying to understand that because you may find a solution but it, very easily, and it may solve some of your lead time items as, or issues as well. Um. Just trying to move on to other items, um, gutters, downspouts, all that sounds positive. That's understandable. Um, stand, can you talk about standing seam metal and things of that nature? Can you talk about, is that, can you talk about those? For the front porch roofs. Okay, so um, the front porch roofs. There's a large uh, tree on the right-hand side. Uh, you can just see the branches in the photo there, but 
um, it creates a lot of mold on that uh, on that pitch of that porch roof currently, that shingle. Um, just thought the standing seam metal roof would be a nice extra for, for maintenance and a nice aesthetic as well. Concerns keep moving through them. Nope. I don't have any concerns. Battle rounds. Yeah. See. I don't have any concerns with that either. Keep going. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to push it through. So uh, siding, I think, was the last one. And that was just looking at the photographs. I think we've already touched on siding. So Kimberly, did we miss any topic? We had the siding. We talked about fish scales. We talked about replacement. Is everybody OK with paint colors? Uh, paint. No issues from a paint color standpoint. It, it's not going to be this bright blue. Right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I mean, I thought there's something that went with the blue, but uh, I would not have approved that color. <laughs> That's why they bought it. You know, the blue. No, con no concerns with the proposed paint color. So I'm, I'm trying to think about what to break out. <laughs> so we want to break out siding. I'm not sure. Do we want to break out windows with the siding because there's some siding that would be done, I think, on the sides as well. So it might benefit all of us. It yeah, goes out in the site visit, but. I need to coordinate that with you and with my manager as well and get it on um, the calendar because that can be a little tricky. My goal is typically to do that if we're going to do a site visit that stems from experience to do that before the business meeting. And that doesn't always schedule in complex. So if you get me the photos, that's going to be the most helpful thing. We can work from there to see if you know I do need to be on site and we need to walk through some things. So what what can we give this guy tonight? Uh, well what's left is it's you know, paint colors, this, this, gutters, windows, and then some of the removal elements, which was more so the fences. Um, yeah, well just removing the fence and then putting the privacy fence in back. Yeah. Okay. So a window off the approved not the casement, mm -hmm. the gutters. What was the third one? Siding. No, mm -hmm. siding is a, we have to look into that. The standing C metal roof? The standing C metal roof is a go. Yep, that was a go. The half rounds a go. That's correct. And picking windows. So that's what we can give you tonight. Looks like it, that would be in your favor. The siding. It's like it's going to have to be a deeper dive to look into it. That's correct. And I, in looking at the privacy fence, the six foot fence, I think it's fine. Yeah, that's, that's, that doesn't bother me either. So, which way do you want to go? I'm fine with all that, except would you be willing to vote on me doing the Pella and Pervy and fiberglass windows throughout and doing, um, the double hungs. I mean that that window um, can be made into the picture windows. It can be made into double hungs, uh, sashes. Um, it's way better than vinyl, um, and it is on the list for a casement. But it can be made into um, the other styles of windows. On the pre-approved list, there are some alternate materials, but they're just different. Products or different 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 manufacturers, so they're not all wood. There and we don't approve vinyl from that perspective. So there are some. If you're worried about durability, long term longevity of the products, things of that nature, there are some products on there that that actually will help you. To I I did see a lot of the aluminum clad wood windows and um, of of such short sort. Um, But I, I really feel like that Pella and Pervy and fiberglass would, would be the way to go for this place. So if, if you want to vote, what we could do is we could break it into three pieces. We could break it into three pieces. So it would be, I'm going to do A would be siding. We've already talked about that one, right? Um, B would be the windows. And what you're asking for is a vote on utilizing the impervium. And then C would be everything else that we've talked about, which was the gutters, the paint colors, the fences, and the standing seam metal roof. 
uh, the removal of the fence. Um, yes. I do want to make a quick note that there are two other fiber glass windows on the creek window slats, and those are the fiber frame tunnel and roof series and the modern and integrity wood ultrax. The Marvin has a fiber glass series of recommended to glass for both. So just if that's what your preference for the good material was, there are other options. Okay. I've got an account with Pella through my dad's company and I just through my research, it, it'd be nice if, if you guys would be willing to, to vote on that for me. Okay. That's a little there are other Pella windows like the architect series of user there. They're twice the, the amount of money and just these Pella and Pervia are already a small fortune. <laughs> Understand. Okay, so so we're gonna do three votes, part A, B, and C. Okay, is that right? Okay. So I'm just gonna keep it consistent with what I just said, so I don't get mixed up. So uh, first one is, can we get a vote um, or a motion related to the siding? And that's gonna be probably a continuation to allow additional research and some engagement with staff uh, to be able to go out on site and work through and understand the existing condition. So can I get a motion? Motion for the dash two one dash one zero dash zero one eight nine seven eight dash nine eighty Harrison Avenue for siting continuation of siting material for to review the quality of the existing material for staff to review photographs and or site visit if possible to determine condition. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so that's continued. So siting, and you're gonna work with staff regarding the site. So no work on the site. All right, so item B, um, item B is a vote for utilizing the impervia window as submitted for all the openings, right? Correct. Okay. And utilizing um, the existing size of the windows or actually bringing the, the, the original size of the windows back. That's Not correct. matching the openings that are currently that we see visually from the street. We're going back to the original opening size. Correct. And doing that by getting back to the framing on the inside and, yes, and finding out that original rough opening. Size. Yes, sir. Perfect. Awesome. Can I have a motion uh, for, for that? And for VB 21 10 978 980 Harrison Avenue for uh, Windows as submitted window type as submitted with um, responding to original opening sizes so i get a second second so any discussion all right so we have a vote all those in favor say aye any opposed aye aye Motion did not pass. Okay. Since we have a denial, I need a few reasons for denying. We, we've got the standards for alteration to choose from, as well as the Victorian Village guidelines that are stated in staff board. I would say I would say the latter, what you mentioned in the staff report. And it's just in regards to, to utilizing um, what's been approved on the pre-approved window list as well. It's strange that it's approved as a casement window, but not for anything else. Understandable. So as a little bit of background, the approved window list was developed over an eight year period. There were a number of windows that were going to add and validated by qualified key commissions. And this predates me, so I don't know the reasons why that to be approved as a casement. Um, I don't have a couple of my coworkers knowledge base of the background that went into everything, but that. Great. Um, 
item C, which would be the balance of the application. Um, I don't need to know the balance of the application. You can just say the rest. Okay, the balance of the application or the rest. Um, all of those items, can I get a motion to approve those as submitted? Motion for BB-21-10-018978-0 Harrison Avenue for the balance of the application items. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you so much for talking through this and working through it. Thank you as well for taking on this property. <laughs> so, so glad that you got your hands on this one. So, yeah, great. Appreciate your time. Um, go, going back to the, uh, there was one fiberglass window that is approved and that's fiberglass in and out. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I will send you the approved window slip, but it's also up on the Victorian Building Commission's website. I, I must have just missed it you know, going through there. So, can I order that window then for, for everything? No, no, no. There's no ordering until we have approvals. I don't want you putting cards before the horse. <laughs> but that, we need to have approval before we have work done, before we order stuff, just on the off chance there's something from happens. So a benefit, a benefit since they're going to be working with staff is, you know, I think that she had mentioned a, a getting a kind of a, a scale draw. So getting a scale drawing, a scaled elevation or something like that. So working through, because it, it, it will help your order, right? It will help your ordering process. Doing some investigative work, trying to understand the openings, the opening sizes, working with staff on what that what that product is. So there's some still some work to be that, some work to be done, but then at the same time you would have that information that's available for that next month's hearing that we would be able to go ahead and continue to move forward. So you could still be making steps incrementally. You know, towards being able to confirm your order, but it's building up the information that we would necessarily need to be able to confirm the approval for whatever application you bring back next we, month. Since we did deny it and hope it's a new application, that's correct. I might look at it as something to get as well. Okay. Since so, the window is not, perfect. if it's only for the window, something perfect. you might do, but yeah, we that would really yeah. be appreciated. Just perfect. with the winter coming yep. and be all awesome. over that. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Anything because I need to look at other things, but that's you know, project based and get the siding done and to get the site visit. Go over the window openings as well because that's something I'll want details on for the original size as after we move them up. All right, thank you. Thank, hey, you. thank, you. thank you so Good much. Luck. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. We're going to continue on to application number 13, BB-21-10-019. This is 172 to 174 Bundles Avenue. This um, application is the result of a code violation for work um, done prior to review and approval. The application um, changed the style of the garage door, changed the service door from the two panels to six panels, and changed the uh, double hung window from an approved three over one to one over one. Change the second story patio opening and patio doors on both floors and install different style of lights on the carriage hatch. Staff recommends that the window and carriage hatch reflect those located in the house. The change in the double doors has downsized a previously uh, proposed opening. Uh, commissioners at the business meeting requested previous approval, which is the BB 20 02 016, which has been included in the staff report. The staff has included some additional photographs as well, like, and the applicant did supply a couple more too. Uh, lights are currently installed higher than depicted on the bank and higher than were previously approved. Uh, per previously approved plans, there was a light over the first floor double doors. Does this still need to be installed? I'm posing that to the commission as a discussion about it. Um, staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the windows match the house and the gooseneck lighting trees installed. My sister recommendation is 3116.3, standards for site improvement, specifically A, and then city code 3116.3, standards for the And Victorian Village guidelines on doors and windows. 
Thank you, Kimberly. Can you state your name, get you sworn in, sir? Yeah, it's uh, Daryl Allen. Do you swear uh, to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. Do you uh, kind of think we understand um, the conditions, but can you just kind of talk to us a little bit about some of the variations and maybe potentially why? I'll just go left to center. Well, yes, yeah, that, 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 I think that that's what we need to hear. Uh, a lot of it back around early March, where I went to these vendors to order these garage doors and certain windows and doors. I can never get a, an answer when they were going to arrive. Product. So, you know, the homeowner got tired of waiting and I think we kind of jumped and just grabbed what we could and installed. So we I all mean, know that's, that's pretty much what happened. We all know we're living in crazy situations. Right. Supply chain is not just for your owner. And um, I think they took a bad risk, quite frankly. Well, the, the garage doors were subbed out to a company that was supposed to be familiar with that with that area. If I sent them you know, the specs, but those are the doors that you see there, I actually did order those place of order at Home Depot. They're still not in. They were ordered back in March. Welcome to the club. I mean, oh, yes. yeah. this is, uh, this is the world we're living in right now. So it's that's unfortunate, that's, but yeah. it is. So we have the garage doors, we have the lighting, and then we have the window composition. So window composition, this is, this appears like two, two windows that's in an opening or is that? Just trying to understand it. I don't know that. So the windows are were approved here as three of our ones, and they're installed as one of our ones. Okay. Which, if we go back to the photos, we can see what's installed. Yeah, when we did this, we were trying to dress this up a bit, and the three of our ones did a little bit for the facade. That's kind of where I went back and forth. But I think the windows and the lights and the doors on the other spot, I think those are, I mean, definitely need to be addressed. But not add like rails to those windows. <laughs> I don't know. So interior grills, is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, yeah, so I don't have to remove them. Are the windows the right proportion even to begin with? I've never seen. I, so here's here here's here's the problem. The windows on the alley side aren't the right proportion. Those windows are probably the windows that were supposed probably uh, spec for the side elevations. I would venture to say. So, see, yeah, those aren't the right windows in the proportion. Actually, even on the side, those, the windows, aren't, those yeah. windows are off all the way around. What do you mean by off? They should be long, taller and skinnier instead yeah. of shorter and wider. That's almost a square versus a rectangle. What what we have here. So I mean, I don't know where to go with this. My inkling is is this really went left to center like left of center. And given we're in sort of uh, post pandemic and the supply chain's all mixed up, supply chain has always been an issue in construction. And it's something that we deal with and we'll, we probably always will deal with. But if in fact, 
you were having problems or the owner should have known if he was having problems, he should have contacted the office to say, hey, you know what? I'm having problems. This is what I think I could do. And the office would have said either yay or it would have said nay. And we wouldn't be in this situation. So they took a gamble and it wasn't a good gamble. So I don't know about the rest of you, but this is, you know, we live in a world where, and it's better to ask forgiveness than it is to ask. And I'm tired of hearing that because we played off way too much. And this is a time where it was, it was not played right. And I, I can't give forgiveness to Ben. This is a new building. This isn't, a, this isn't an existing building that you were trying to modify. This is a new building. You know, the only one that is, is not as offensive to me is the lighting location, <laughs> so. Um, you know, the lighting location is okay, but it was supposed to be gooseneck. Right. But uh, the but, lighting type is, is, is still a concern, but the, the location of them moving slightly, you know, up, I'm fine not with that. That, that, one, you know, that's, that perspective. So, um, but I would agree. Uh, I think that there was probably a lot of time. There was a lot of effort associated with the review of, of that. And there should be some consistency to what was you know previously talked with. I don't remember this property, but um, I'm sure there was a lot of time spent. So I believe this was reviewed in 2020. So it would have been right before everything shut down. <laughs> well, but also, uh, you know, I have a good memory, and this has been dummied down as far as it was going to be half brick. It was going to be uh, board and batten, real board and batten. We dummied this down a lot to re engineer it to get a price. And then to see this happen, no. Yeah, I kind of, I took over the job later into the project. So, what about the garage door? Are those, you know, acceptable or? Well, no, they're not acceptable. But if we're talking the worst enemies, I'd say the lighting and the windows need to be addressed. That's not putting, you know, volumes in them. That's redoing the windows and adding the lights. I would presume that door that's on that the second floor door, Juliet door, kind of, I think that had lights in it as well. Am I, am I seeing that correctly in the application? That one doesn't have lights, but I think in the application, I think there was lights in it, maybe possibly. I think to go to the previous approval, there may have been some lights in the second story. No, the Juliet window didn't have any lights. Okay. And the bottom didn't have any. No, it had a it had a use. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Divided lights. I'm I'm sorry. Or. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. You know, the light key. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get it, made, buddy. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Julia didn't change that. Yeah, this, I think that's what we're So yes. let's move yeah. on, boys. All right. <clears throat> so um, what do we do? So um, I guess we can continue, or that's, that's not going to do us anything. Um, we can break out. Elements again is the best thing to do to try to help us move forward. So we have lighting, we have windows, and we have garage doors. Well, you've got also the van door. Yeah. So, like the Juliet Valley, oh, we're supposed to be widening the door as well. It's supposed to be different. I think you can go in the van door to be as well. So, so I, mean, I guess we could break it out four items so you get votes on all four items and those will give you the list of items that you need to correct. I don't know if there's anything else to do. Um, and is, it, is that more beneficial from that perspective or. 
<laughs> from a timing perspective for them yeah. and other, yeah, um, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it'll work. You could also divide it into what can be approved and what needs to match the original. I mean, just in terms of saving time for the numbers. Yes, that'll be very. But we can, we can also split it out too. So, what would you prefer? Just whatever you guys tell me to do. I'll, okay. Like I said, I, I stepped in, in this job late. And no excuses, so whatever I, you guys give me. I'll... Just to help him communicate back to the homeowner, I, I, I would rather just go ahead and do the floor. And I'll, just, I'll just move swiftly as much as possible if that's okay. Fair enough. Okay. All right, so number one would be um, lighting. So um, you know, motion for the lighting location to be. Um, lighting location, we're not really worried about from that perspective, um, but it's more so lighting style. Fixture the fixture type. Motion to approve as it's installed to vary from what was previously approved. Not following you. I'm so, brain dead, but I'm no, it's like, trying to help you. But no, it's understood. So, um, so we're going to break this out into the elements. So it's going to be lighting. It's going to be the doors. It's going to be the window. It's going to be man doors. It's going to be windows, and it's going to be garage doors. So those are four, four items that are being talked about. Um, so what he's asking for is what's installed to be acceptable. That's that was the application because it was a total violation. From that perspective. So, so I guess why would we break this apart? Why don't we break this? It's it, it, it's all code violation. Yeah. We should just vote on it as one thing. It's one thing. Okay. I mean, doesn't make sense to break it down. If there was any, if there was any thought amongst the three of us that anything on that list was going to be acceptable as is, that would be the only benefit. Yes, I would. There's anything that is okay that you want to approve, I break that out because of the off chance that you have to deny that you're denying the entire thing. That's correct. And I, I I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell in the commentary that was provided if that one thing was was going to be acceptable. And I, <laughs> I didn't want to put it on the spot. It's the garage door. So that's not doors are the only thing. It was right, it was the garage door. And so I just didn't I didn't know. I didn't know if the garage doors were. And I think that's with a caveat if they're ever replaced or damaged, they need to be changed out. That's, that's the only thing. Okay. So if that's the case, then I'm going to do two. Then. All right, I'll do two. Okay. So the first one is the garage doors. Um, uh, a motion to uh, approve the garage doors as is. Whoever makes the motion can add that caveat. That's correct. That's the hope. Okay. Make a motion for. Uh, Sorry, Jeff. Make a motion for 21 and 2172 through 174 Federals Avenue. Uh, the garage doors as installed with the uh, stipulation that if the doors are ever damaged or replaced uh, to uh, be brought back and utilize something off the uh, Village commissions. So we don't have an I thought original what was in the original, original submission. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. The process. So that's out. So now the balance of it is um, doors, you see, man doors, uh, windows, and lighting. Those elements that are currently buried from the previous approval. He's asking for approval of those elements as currently installed. Application 2110 2172 through 174 Buttles Avenue. Uh, applicant is uh, asking that uh, these elements be approved as installed. That would be the windows, the man doors, and the lights. Yes, sir. And a second? Second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to utilize your staffing report if you don't mind for the denial on those elements. Sorry, Kimberly. Slightly like precedent. I, I, Standard work. <laughs> but for sake of time. That's Thank why you. we have a lawyer. Thank you. See you. Are supposed to use the uh, city code and so many guidelines to utilize the review. So you should be at least a little bit familiar with them. We're, we're trying. We're trying. But we're pressed for time, so I'm not going to hold you deep from the fire. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will get you documents for both of these. It's going to take a couple of days, though. And I know 17217 quote bottle is the next application as well. Is that you too? Uh, he, uh, Leonard, he's, uh, he's not going to do the project. The, book, uh, the back porch, I believe. Okay. Yes. Yeah, he sent a text earlier when I was coming up here to uh, cancel that project. And sorry, sorry we're in this position, but it's just yeah. not good. Okay, so we're with the drawing applications before it's seen. Yes. Okay. So Thank you for letting me know. Oh, yeah. Some of them already did, but obviously they didn't. We're going to stand still up on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody probably thought somebody else was, you know, and <laughs> we know. I, I know how that goes. So, thank you. I think we're all, all done discussing. So, one two bottles. the garage doors can stay. Yes. The That's windows have to be removed. So Be sized. Size. Yeah, so that'll need to come back as an approval so we can finalize what's going in there. Because we need to and we have a record of that it's changing and that whatever went in was approved by the commission. So even if it's we're going back to um, the approved documents, we have that on record. And just to FYI. Not to be the bearer of bad, more bad news, but um, that application for the back door and gazebo or a, that was a raised platform that would not be okay. So okay. that would just be wasted effort. So FYI. Thank you, sir. Oh, Truly appreciate thank it. it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Can we are we taking a short break for a second? Right? Is that what we're trying to do? And I do appreciate everybody who is sitting here. Um, we're we're, we're going to take a quick, maybe five minutes max break. Perfect. So we are recording. We'll probably still be on, but we will do our best to get back there. Well, I thought the Borton's for order of keys or something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Oh, we can hold them to that. In case you'd like to talk to yourself. <laughs>
Unfortunately, I wasn't at the, I wasn't at the business meeting. I'll, um, I'm presuming that 
Okay. So we do have a couple of secondaries for the oh. I don't want to forget about that. Got it. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank so you. So okay. we have Lisa Faith Morrison and Justin Boston. I'm not sure who wants to speak to. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't realize it was. <laughs> so. okay. Don will get you sworn in and then we'll start your time. Could you go ahead and state your name for the record? My name is Lisa Craig Morgan. Okay. You need to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, just wanted to make a few comments about the current situation. And by the way, it is already being demolished as we speak. Um, just FYI. But um, I'll just sort of try to read from this or here. Um, I believe that um, Urban Order probably is the best residential architects in practice in Columbus at this time. We hold them in very high regard and they design our third house, which is adjacent to this one at 1149 Neal. Um, we are very grateful that they've been retained for this project. While we regret the demolition of the existing historic carriage house, we don't oppose it, nor do we oppose the construction of a new one in its place. The design that Urban Order has proposed is attractive and visually appealing and does a nice job of paying homage to the historic structure that it will replace. That being said, the proposed carriage house is just way too big. With an overall footprint of 44 feet by 34 feet, 33 feet, it comes in at 1,452 square feet, which is about 50% larger than the adjacent carriage houses on each spot. Um, so the lots are the exact same width, 50 feet, and this carriage house would be 50% larger, just under 50%. So we would urge the commission to require um, several items be addressed to scale down the overall proposal of this project. First, the five foot side yard must be maintained on both sides. We were required to do that at 1149. We've been fighting for the better part of a year to get that to happen at 1135 and we're finally there. And this property owner should be required to do that as well. Um, it should be noted that the existing structure does not provide a five foot side yard. It also doesn't provide the normal setback from the alley, and I'm assuming you're going to make it to that modern setback from the alley when it's rebuilt, and we would ask that you have a five foot side door. The roof ridge line should be reduced from 30 feet to 26 feet. Again, that would be in keeping with the two adjacent carriage houses at 1149 and 1163. The big thing is the T-shaped bump out on the proposed design. That's a, that's a huge deal breaker for us. Um, the bump out adds significantly to the footprint of the property, and it also puts an, an incredible tree um, in the adjacent yard at risk of being damaged or killed. Um, that bump out also, I believe, would severely impact our ability to enjoy our backyard and our privacy and our property. So we would ask that you take a look at that. We think that the carriage house should just be a rectangular shape in keeping with all of the other carriage houses on this block. Um, and then because Kimberly's always talking about the code, I think that this section of the code that is relevant to my comments is 3119.12, where the city code discusses that for new development, um, it must fit in with a historic neighborhood in terms of building height, width, mass, and proportion, and it should be compatible to the existing structures adjacent. Thank you. This is not spot on. My name is Jeff Morton. Yes, sir. Awesome. Can you give me the tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah, thank you, sir. I rise uh, as an environmentalist as well as a historical preservationist. In this particular case, I'm talking about the preservation of what I think is a historic tree. The uh, city of Columbus has embarked on a course to say the forest trees in the city of Forest. The city's master forestry plan calls for minimizing the loss of tree canopy. And protecting old growth trees for development. Part of the attraction of the historic is old growth trees, which Ben advocated the once to save old growth trees of the Bible Mill, and now a Maryland elm tree at 1163 would also be closed. Furthermore, this one species of trees is at risk not only from environmental factors such as Dutch elm trees, but now from law and development as well. Specifically, the footprint of the carriage house at 153 is 50% larger than our carriage house at 163. But for any excavation to a structure that's almost 200 square feet, 
this nerve in the tail is going to be put at risk of working. The proposed design is attractive. Uh, we would love to see the carriage house smaller by requiring five foot five, five foot side yard on each side to as few of the part of This would reduce the potential destruction of the house roofs. We would also like to see a reduced size so it doesn't have the T shape. Uh, and it's just a rectangular shape as other carriages have so far. These two changes would go a long ways to protecting the elm tree and would also ensure further, ensure further erosion of our quality of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So, um, now this is comments. And this is conceptual. So, yes. there may be a little bit more back and forth than typical yeah. from that perspective. So, just one of them, you know, obviously it's open dialogue. So, um, so let's go. Gosh, why don't you go with the 2007 one? It's so charming and handsome. Well, at some point, it becomes a pastiche if we try to recreate this design, which is then a can't be in the same location, can't have the same setbacks, and it's it, it's it's just a whole different layout. So I, I get that, but there's there's a life span of some some of these places that place it. So it doesn't make sense to build a contemporary version of a, an old carriage house. Because I, I just see this as too too huge, too grandiose. I mean well, we do have to say this is the biggest house on the Avenue. So and this is not the biggest carriage house or structure on that rear mouth, right? So, so, it, it, so, you know, so it, it, a, given that argument, though, if you if, if if I had to like pick a card, I would never know if that was the grandest house that would be the carriage house that's attached to it. Well, I mean, that's what, what, what do you mean by that? I don't think they I don't see there's any connection or they talk to one another at all. <laughs> well, I mean, that. So you're saying we should recreate the house? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're stuck with the house. And I think this is just, I think it needs to be, it needs some attention. Well, like I said, we're here for conceptual. So yep. that's it. And the whole reason for the T shaped design, talking about the, the tree that's in the neighbor yard, that's why it was a T shaped design, so that you have porches on either side of this. And that's to hold the building and the foundations away from those tree roots. So, uh, so we very consciously went in, went into this project, trying to make, make sure we did not do any harm to that tree. Right. The rear alley setback is the same as the carry houses on at least the south, and the depth of the primary piece is the same as that. So, yeah, as Dean said, we're, we're taking into consideration the, the tree and the space from the alley and the primary roof shape and the eave heights of the neighbors and, and all of those things. So, the, can you talk about the 25? The 25 feet is relative to, to, to what? I know that to the, the notches out of each side. <clears throat> and the creation of that T-shape yeah. is to alleviate the impact of the existing tree. Um, but the 25 feet that you're starting with, that 25 feet is, and you give that relationship to one of the other carriage houses, is it is one of the other carriage houses 28 feet, or is it, you know, are they 30 feet, or just what is that relationship, since that's not drawn in the conceptual plan, just to try to yeah, understand. And that's something we could get back and look at. Um, we, could, we could check the do research with the preservation office about what those other carriage houses are. We have the drawings for the carriage house, for Lisa and Jeff's carriage house. So we can compare that to that and show you on the site plan too, okay. going forward. Just, just, we're just curious in terms of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. But understandable. understandable. I'm not sure I buy the, the argument about the, the, the notching and the porches responding to the tree, I mean, you're still disturbing area within that footprint. So that it's not about the volume, the, the space there, it's about destroying anything in that route. Uh, so I, I, I guess I challenge that thinking. That, but I think doing foundations are more, you know, steep foundations are certainly more disruptive to it. Certainly more destructive. So but, this is just, these would be, this would be a slab on grade for those porches. So. But tree root zone, even, even putting 
thin layer of material over top of that soil is going to suffocate that that area for the tree root zone. So in, any disturbance there it's going to have an impact to that area of the root zone. Oh sure. And I think anything we do is going to just the, the tree is been is so old that anything that anybody does in the neighborhood is going to probably in that area is going to affect those tree roots. So that's why we're trying to do them so that's it. We're very conscious about tree roots. It'd be helpful to, you know, if that is kind of a big part of this to, to see this rough location then. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, have, do you know where the tree is that you're talking about, or have you been out to the property? I don't. Okay. Yeah, we're also working with the neighbors on the north, so we know where that tree is, mm -hmm. and we can get that information. A temporary fence is, is proposed is um, across the backyard, so that we are disturbing anything back there as little as possible. So, gotcha. Yeah. We know how sometimes construction people will just take over if we give them space. We're going to just prevent that. Well, would you be able to talk to us about a little bit more about the height relationships as well? So we talked about the width, just we just touched on, but as far as the height relationships in terms of the adjacent properties, um, ridge line height. Yeah, like I said, I think they're down the alley. There's a two and a half story carriage house. Um, we're trying to keep this as just a two story we're starting off with kind of the six foot knee walls and then rising up um, we've found that historically we could do a shallower pitch to bring the roof line down but that's rather arbitrary because i think it's more about the proportions of the business of the design and so what we found is having good you know smaller knee walls at higher pitch gives it a more victorian feel rather than kind of a flattened um Look like that. So, like that, very trust that we were just trying to fix. I understand what that roof is. What's the point? And on, on, on this one, on, this, on the sides of the carriage house, I think we brought the pitch in as a 10 12, and then the cross gable as a 12 12, again, because that's really the focal point playing down the sides, and that was an effort to bring the roof line down a little bit. And so, we could look at that too about trying to bring that down even a little further. But in, in my experience, it's almost a little more arbitrary. You don't you can respond more to the E height than you do to the, to the bridge height. So I understand. Yeah, it would just be good to just to understand that that juxtaposition of the two. There's just been a lot of discussion uh, in that alley related to some of these properties. It's, yeah, it's, and so it just it would unfortunately, <laughs> so but I think it would be very helpful and, uh, absolutely. for us to be consistent uh, from that perspective. Oh just, sure, and just I, we, do, we want it to fit in. We don't want it to overpower. We want it to be able to blend with the house. So. Towards Jeffrey's idea, you know, so how do we tie it in more to the house, respond more to the architecture? You know, how do we maybe bring the roof line down? Um, you know, those types of things. So, I wonder if the, the massing of the openings in the center there is contributing to the sense of the scaling. So, the window fenestration, yeah, yeah. And, and some of that is um, client driven. So, we can certainly look at that. So is there a huge uh, antler chandelier going in the center of that? <laughs> What's it going to be? We don't, we don't have any interior. Certainly not interior design. But I think, I think to your point, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think we can look at that. So, because you're right, I think it, it, if we want to go more farm like, less lodge like. And most people would never put that into those many windows. Usually they, they argue against putting any type of window. Yeah, because climate change, or it might be a pond out there, or an ocean. There, so there you go. <laughs> Good idea. It could be a boathouse, right? It could be a boathouse. There you go. So, so, Jim, okay, so we're kind of hearing we hear the general comments. And so, and also, yeah, obviously the neighbor comments. Mm -hmm. So, certainly mm -hmm. be a good neighbor. So. For sure. And just a sort of specific question, are, is there general concern of the footprint if we're not in address the tree? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see addressing the, the side yard setback. Yeah, I think trying to understand, <clears throat> I mean, from a program standpoint, I mean, there's a lot of discussions related to too much programming. Lately, right? So, so 
understanding the impacts that give us the solution. Like why, you know, what are what are the things that happened in your evaluation that might have influenced this thing to be slightly bigger? But at the same time, there's a certain purpose associated with it, and it's not necessarily for scale for probing. Right. And that would be good, very helpful. That's a good question because we're talking about side yard setbacks. That's correct. If we go to five foot setbacks, we won't be able to get a four car garage in there. So the goal is obviously to get as many cars off the street. So by doing three feet, which is the standard for most of the lots in the Victoria Village, we would be able to get four cars in there. If we go with five foot setbacks and we're three car garage, so it, it, a large three car garage. And so it just it, it changes the dynamics of the potential program. So yeah. So just understanding some of those things when you guys come back, I mean, I mean, obviously you guys want to push and this is only elevation driven right now from that perspective. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to have more for that next conversation, but I think that would probably help some of the neighbors can, you know, comments and at least clarify, you know, maybe where we're headed um, and maybe some reasons why. I don't think it's what we're saying, yeah. So very helpful. I think I was looking for the existing survey, but the existing barn is doesn't have to fight for so much. Right on. <clears throat> that give you that give you guys enough to kind of chew on and absolutely. Okay, we truly appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. <clears throat> oh, this is just for the office and thing, but the, as Lisa said, the building would be demolished because it was their demolition order was. Agreement was issued by the city. Um, so should we? So could you email me because I'm going to make sure that it's the latter. Just because they issued the was the one warning they issued wasn't it was even going to build the incident. It's it's not safe. So we either need to repair it or tear it down. And I think in code there's a section. That's um, the historic preservation office or the area commission has uh, some jurisdiction to overturn that within 30 days. So if you can email me, I'll look into it because something may have happened between when the unsafe order got issued and when the building is coming down. But realistically, it should have an approval from us. That's why I brought it up. Yeah, and part of the standard of demolition, it needs to have a proof plan. That, that's a little worrisome, but thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Everybody. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Continue. All right, we're going on to number 16, our second to last application. This is EV 41 10 22 1187 Hunter Avenue. Central to demolish an existing garage and construct a new two story with frame garage measure in approximately 30 feet by 24 feet. Commissioners at the business meeting requested current photographs of the existing structure and measurements of the existing garage. The PO staff requested a sales measure, scale the measured site plan of the existing. Um, staff has included the 1901 and 1922 to 1955 standalone maps with the material. Historically, uh, there appears to have been a two story, two car garage. Staff has included a 1962 photograph of the historic building, as well as the 1989 photograph of the existing structure, and a 2017 photograph from the County Auditor's website is also included. Uh, the current structure was constructed sometime between 1962 and 1989. The commission needs to decide if this is historic in its own right. In the event that the garage is not historic, is the commission comfortable allowing the demolition of the structure if it is still in good condition? The dimensions of the existing structure, existing garage are 16 feet wide by 20 feet deep. Commissioners should offer some feedback back to be utilized at a future hearing. Basis for our recommendation is 3116.14, these standards for demolition, and 3116.12, these standards for the construction, and the Victorian Village guidelines on construction. Uh, so, can you guys take your name? Can you just warn in, sir? My name is Karen Cheryl. Perfect. 
Do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I certainly do. Perfect, sir. All right, so it's conceptual, so just we can have dialogue and just kind of talk about what you're proposing. Uh, we're proposing a garage <clears throat> with storage in the second floor. Uh, we're proposing something that's a little bit taller than a, a standard garage. It's got a, a 25 foot rich height uh, that's primarily for storage. Uh, I asked the client of mine uh, what they were intending to do with, with the uh, upper floor, and they really are just planning on using it for storage. Uh, <clears throat> Or not. I can only tell you what I've been told. Um, so, uh, you know, there's that. There's a obviously fairly large. Um, I think that's a primary uh, residence. Uh, it's on a separate parcel that's right adjacent to it. So, um, I imagine it may have been a carriage house at some point or another. Um, but I think in terms of scale. Um, we're, we're right in line with, with other buildings um, on the alley. Um, you can see in the existing photos that were on the other sheet uh, that there are a number of kind of one and a half story um, carriage houses or garages uh, kind of across the alley and down the alley. I think that's it. Take your comments. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, sir. So the first thing that really jumps out at me, and this is just again aesthetic, is the band. Is that a band of windows? No. What is that? Just kind of uh, paneling. Uh, there's a transom window above the van door. Um, it's just some ornament that I put on there to. Um, give it a cottagey feel. Seems like that's probably unnecessarily. Yeah, it's unnecessary. The sale of a structure. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess we kind of crossed the Rubicon on these, but all these things are on steroids to, you know, it, it's basically adding living units and creating income on the back of my property instead of probably truly being a garage and I use it for storage like most of these things used to be. You know, um, that's, you know, when you look at this, so when you look at the side elevation, the side, the north elevation, looks more like a suburban house than it does a carriage house. You know, I get the cottagey in the front, but right. when you actually look at it, start uh, unfolding it, it, it kind of just doesn't add up. So those are my comments. Uh, that's a great observation from the standpoint of pitch, you know, given the mass and this is responding to, you know, the overall size. And so kind of balancing that out, uh, I think it would be very helpful. Uh, I would agree with, um, you know, Jeff's observations on the West Alley elevation in terms of the, the banding, you know, does it really need a, does it really need a transom? You know, is, is that the right location for a door? You know, like just gonna, why is that on the alley side? You, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, the reasons why if it's not being used for, you know, something else other than storage. So, um, I know you're. Yes, I mean, you know, warehouses don't have cables. Warehouses are square. That's how you store things. So, I. Uh, so, thank you. Okay. And, and, <laughs> and if you, you know, and if you see the original structure, that original picture we had is kind of handsome. Yeah. And that would be used for. I didn't see the uh, original. I didn't. Can we bring the picture up of the. So I was looking through the file just to see the history of the site. And I'm gonna note, this is a pretty rare thing for a file to have a 1962 photo. 
but what was there was look at that can you say storage sure <laughs> <laughs> Cute little window on the side there. I mean, if you if you prefer something like that, I mean, I think, I mean, honestly, my client's just trying to get volume because they actually want to use the garage for storage um, above their cars so they can actually park. I know a lot of people use their garages for storage, but they park their cars on the street. So, um, well, I think that's a good example. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's fine. I mean, obviously, the, uh, the height of that appears taller than what I've posed, I guess, at least um, on the alley side. My attempt at this solution was to bring the east side down on the alley, but, uh, you know, understanding that that historic structure is something to be modeled, and obviously, there's a fairly large structure right next to it. So yep. I'm fine with heading in that direction. And it may not necessarily be like for like as well when you work yeah. out the proportion. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, you I know mean, what I mean? Like in, you know what I mean? Sure. There's, there's a proportion gain associated with to it as well. So yeah. that's understandable. So I think cues from the simplicity of that kind of structure and the common out with the trying to cram the door Next to the, the garage door openings versus you know maybe the side. I think there's some things to take from this. Sure. Yeah, the, the other piece of this application is the 60s plus era structure that's a decent shape there. I, in terms of do we have any opinion? I have I don't think it has any type of architectural value, it might be structurally sound. But it's likely structurally sound. Yep. <laughs> yep. But as far as uh, deconstructing it to build something more appropriate, I'm fine with that. Great. Anything great. else from us? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Good luck. Uh, So can you state your name, get you sworn in? Heidi Bollier, so I'm the architect. Um, both of you guys, do you agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. 
Oh, so no problem. Thank you. All right. Well, it's just obviously it's conceptual. Um, so just back and forth dialogue just to kind of work through it. Um, before we get started, I, I definitely want to from our you know from our side of the table um, just echo that same sentiment of you know just obviously thank you so much for sticking around. Um, Thank you so much for the dialogue over the you know last couple of months related to this property and such. So uh, we just appreciate it. So I just wanted to make sure that we start off on a, on a positive note from that perspective. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. So just um, looking at the the structures that you uh, had mentioned last time, the one that's um, north on um, Denison, and then also looking at the North Star um, building that's on High Street. And just taking some cues from those structures to refine the design that um, we have been working on previously. So I think you're definitely going in the right direction. I think you took those cues. Um, I think the only thing that I would like to zero in on is how uh, the uh, corner block is treated. I think it just needs a little bit of work vocabulary and balancing it, but I think the rest of it is falling into place. In terms when you say addressing the corner, do you mean in terms of like landscaping? No. Or um window, window, door kind of articulation just to refine it. So it really does look like a special lantern. It's that corner piece that really does speak about architecture and building, mm -hmm. and then the rest of it kind of just yeah. marches on. Do you agree? Uh, completely, completely. Yeah. Yeah. When there's more in there, it's just the the three D doesn't necessarily show all. The yeah, details. understand. You, you know, changes in color. Yeah. it does show more details if you look at the line drawing. Just how it'll be, you know, trimming out and putting panels in there. Um, above the windows, your cornice. But I think just just being able to, I, I think that you know you guys definitely responded to the notion about looking at the amount of fenestration versus the amount of solid, and not necessarily taking that same fenestration language and kind of carrying it around as a ribbon, but more so thinking about where are the where are the moments and the opportunities to celebrate more fenestration, and where are the Opportunities and moments to play down and actually play off. I mean, last you time know, you were very frustrated, yeah. and so. we get that. But I think this is really, truly, actually going in the right direction. I wanted to be mindful too of that east side of the structure, just because that is right up against the property line, and there is a home on that side. So just keeping that section of the roof down a little bit further. Yep, so it's steps, so it steps so down. So yep. Yeah, just kind of well, setting it down as it goes to the east. Would you be able to kind of walk us through the understanding of why the is there two options here or I just didn't yeah. understand that was okay. It's just one. Okay, so one says revised and one said original, but they were both new comparatively to what we saw. So, so I didn't, I'm sorry. One was submitted uh, prior to business meeting and the other was submitted after. So I understand. Okay, I, I, no, 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 I that's my fault because I wasn't at the business piece. That's that's my so thank you. I got it. Yeah, with this one on the right elevation, we had, um, I didn't realize that there were some glass windows on that existing first floor level. Say that existing. again. On that right elevation, there's existing glass block windows on that first floor level. So that's where the revision was, is that we had added those into the plan. It's so tight to the property line there that we kind of. This looks like it's not up there. So those are existing glass block windows, and she in the, the previous drawing she didn't have those represented. It was represented as a solid, so she was kind of you know catching that up to the existing conditions. <laughs> so I wonder the corner piece. If the windows were the same as the other windows, would that work with just that type of articulation with all those windows? Is 
So kind of building, building, and then nice building on the corner. But we have four square windows, or maybe even double hung, I don't know. But just what do you mean by four square windows? So you see, uh, it's a double hung with a mullion. Correct. All the other windows, yeah. but down on the corner, it's just a, it's a, a it's a whole window. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we have all the windows sort of replicate that, kind of tie everything together, and then I think we would just have to uh, think about the details and whether that's just finished work between just to kind of articulate a little bit. So that we would have all. Basically, like case with windows on it instead of double hung windows. No, no, no. These are all double hung windows. These are all double hung windows. Yeah, we could definitely look at that. And then my I only other that having that it sets it apart, kind of like it's on the the north star that corner piece. Is set apart. Yeah. The of the structure. Yeah, and I think that's probably one of those things that it's not necessarily that's not necessarily the direction, the right direction. It's just something okay. that kind of. Well, no, if you look, so she's talking about the corner, and if you look at that, that the paneling mm -hmm. is really articulate, uh, uh, and how it sits because it sits out. Right. Um, that's that's how this should be detailed and then the only other thing I would say is is um addressing the back door in sort of a little more articulate hood kind of polish it a little bit yeah, we were just kind of looking at like a modern canopy back there about those, those two doors at the back corner. Oh no, I'm talking about the front, mm -hmm. the front door. The front door on the corner piece. Oh. The back piece I'm fine with. It's the front because it kind of looks like the same. Mm -hmm. You see that? It is the same. Yeah, so just kind of really make it say entrance corner. Was the what was the window that you guys were proposing? What was the window style? So was that just a piece of fixed glass that was the corner piece that would be fixed glass? That's what you were thinking. But it could be a you know I like doing the double hung because I just think it makes it a total. It yeah. gives it more residential feel than the residential neighborhood. Yeah, it'll it'll read as big building but articulated vertically, mm -hmm. and and it may not. It, it may not be the same on all three floors. Uh, just, you know, I mean, like, I think that, that this corner piece is, you know, so I wouldn't, I, I don't know. I just, it, it could, it could vary. The first floor could vary from the upper floors too. And the first floor could vary, but I think the upper floors are yeah. all the same. Yeah, absolutely. So, so just storefront, yeah. office, That's right. living. You start to kind of think about that, you know, yeah. so. And the other question is, is on that, on that uh, corner piece, uh, are those windows or is that just infill at the very top? At the top is the It Could that be a very tall space and have windows? Not with having a flat roof on top. Okay. Because we need to have space on Because I mean, that would be a killer, room. that corner would be a killer corner. That had transfers on. It looks like the rendering is a little stronger than the proportions that are worked out in the yep. You know what I mean? So the proportions that she's worked out now in the in the two D drawings, it's you know it's just they're not as tall. You know what I mean? So it's, I think it's helpful. But yeah, I think the next is I think the next moves are just detailing. Would it be helpful to understand um, 
as you kind of continue to that detailing process is a, a section through this thing to try to understand the ins and outs or you know I me mean, for us to understand the ins and outs it's well it's conceptual design no 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 no. i'm not talking about i'm, I'm talking about later down the road oh. when you come back for approval it would be good to understand that it's actually just looking at yeah. how oh, you know the structure itself yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am Anything that we're talking about now in terms of height, um, that you, you, you kind of mentioned the height and looking at the height, is it, is there a certain relationship to anything else that is there that how this is kind of responding to? It's, it's hard to tell in the rendering, you know, well, as it relates to that. Yeah, from the rendering, can you go back? Um, like the height is, you know, very similar to what the height, because of the step up at the like the sets up several feet on that on that island side there's there's a parking lot a driver parking lot where the blue house is uh -huh. so that was yeah. a yeah, very that's similar a really weird condition that and hiding yes um and we had provided um elevations at the last meeting okay showing the height of the neighboring structures okay I was just so, curious. I'm just curious. I feel like they're all about 30, 32, 33. Okay. Or, you know, between 32 and 35 feet. So okay. they're all within a few um, feet of this. The one thing that, you know, because that blue house is only a two story structure where some of them are a little bit taller than that, um, it helps that we have that height difference between where our parking lot is and where their grade is. Awesome. Okay. I, was just, I was just curious from that perspective. Cool. Awesome, thank you. Any other comments or thoughts or anything that you need from us? Um, can we proceed then with other drawings for approval? So I'd like to know who we probably also want to see any variances if that applicable while the applicant was waiting until that you had a finalized floor space and for the overhangs. Yeah, variances and details. Yeah. Yes. And that would not be a conceptual to look at those related items though. So I, I would agree that you know you're you're moving forward from that perspective. It's just Looking at those items in concert of what gets advanced. Is that yes? That, yeah. So okay. the detailing variances and the cover product sheets. So we can start moving this to an approval and if there are any questions about the material that commissioners can relate feedback and give you more information or something you might need to swap down. Uh, we just spoken to Christine Leeds about um the variances, but she said she couldn't give us a final list until we had a site plan to the list being moving forward with. Understandable. Awesome. Well, yep. Perfect. Again, thank you so much for working through it uh, with us and the dialogue. Very, very helpful. Good job. Right. Good job. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. And I'm kind of clumpy at this time. It's all well, Power off. Awesome. All right, Commissioner Mitchell, before we wrap this up, I would like to mention holidays are approaching. Um, I know we have a, a December business. Are meeting. you trying to get a date for a holiday party? No. no. And, and what you're going to bring? Yes. Yes. Bye, you guys. Yes. Be good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No. Uh, December business meeting falls on November 24th, which is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And then the January business meeting falls on December 28th. But it's that week of the year between Christmas and New Year's. I don't know who celebrates what, but I'm, I'm kind of starting thinking about who's going to be here. Are we going to be able to have those meetings? Because if we're not, I want to be able to get ahead and let applicants know what's going to be happening. I mean, for Thanksgiving. So say that again. So December is. So 
the, the December business meeting is November 24th, that is last Wednesday in November, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's not the best Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't planning a meeting in town, but yeah. if, I was, if we needed to hold it, um, Connie Torbeck had volunteered to step in, and uh, I, I need to yeah. rearrange that as well. And yeah. make sure the meeting's on the 8th, right? December 8th. I, I believe that is the second Wednesday. Yes, the December 8th. December 8th is okay with me. Okay. Good. I'll, I'll try to pencil you down for that, that meeting ahead of time. Um, and then the January business meeting is the last Wednesday of December. And I want to say that's the 28th, but it, it falls between Christmas and New Year's. And I know like a lot of people. Yeah, I'll be, in town. Kids. I'll be in town. I'd be in town. Likewise. Okay, so it sounds like the majority of the commission is going to be out of town. <laughs> Um, I will check with the group meeting too that I'm not here to see what their plans are and how I need to adapt it being six But I wanted to talk about that to get ahead of it. And I'm also not planning on being in town six or seven. I will probably be fasting. My mother in law's town. Understandable. <laughs> There would be two fantastic meals for both sides of the family. <laughs> One of them requires a little bit more preparation. Than the other. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for asking us ahead of time. That's, that's very helpful. Yeah, we're working on the 2022 calendar. I mean, what, what started that? Awesome. Motion to adjourn? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.